so do you do you even uh, do you still come to dispensaries? Do you go inside oh, shops? Yeah, um, so, yeah, sometimes. What do you usually like? What do you get? Um, oh, yeah. Edibles, I, weed, I, I, pre-rolls. Do get, I, I do get a lot of edibles. Edibles? Yeah, I've been more, more into the gummies lately. Oh uh, well, um, what, what, what's gummies? Do you like a brand, a certain brand? We got a whole bunch of gummies here. Wild is good. Wilds are very popular. Yeah, um, I but I'm always about trying new stuff. Yeah, so if you got a, if you got a recommendation, so have you tried the Dojas? Uh, no. Dojas and the Hamsas are pretty good too. Those are kosher, if you oh, care. Yeah? <laughs> uh, I mean, just the, I mean, flavors. People usually go by flavors, or they go right. by what it is. If it's like solventless or distillate, I don't know if you have a preference. But whatever flavors you see, whatever you like, whatever's catching your eyes, let, let me know. Let me get this uh, honeydew. Honeydew? All right. Nobody ever picks honeydew. What else? Oh, you got the drinks in here. You get, oh yeah, you get the Montalada, the Sirenus, and you got all the Kalihanas. We got them. Yeah, those are hell, those are mine. We got them, I know. I said, oh, 100 I, milligram drinks. Yeah, you know, those are, those are vicious to say. Oh, I, those yeah. Are, yeah. People okay. like those too. That's and why then, you get the resealable top. Yeah, well you can get the syrup, so you don't have to drink as much, and it's more con like controlled. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. We got the pre-rolls, we got hash. I like, yeah, give me some uh, pre-rolls. Pre-rolls are all right here. We got multiple pack. You like the infused pre-rolls or you like regular weed? Uh, uh, what, what kind of weed do you like? I mean, are you like indica, uh, sativa, sweet, gas? I'm more of a sativa. Okay, yeah. like Jackie's, oranges. Yeah. Okay, well we got some, uh, some good ones. Like this is a lemon, lemon twist, which is like a lemon, that's a sativa. All flour, it's not infused. West Coast Cure. The, these are little hash walkers. These are infused with hash. They're like little mini joints. Pretty, pretty effective. Yeah. I want to get you like the lemon. Yeah, give me the yeah, the pure lemon. Pure hash lemon. Walkers. I'll get you one of these lemon zests as well, since you like the sativas. Uh, and then I gotta get you some edibles also, right? But we got all sorts of weed as well. Mm hmm But I'm sure you get a lot of that. Oh yeah. And then I got you some of that for you. All right, yeah. The yeah. Adam, you gotta have the Adam Hill OG. I'll, I'll get you that in the studio. Uh, so you said honeydew, doja honeydews. Uh, let's see. You like the wilds? What else do you want? Do you wanna try one of these, these hamsas? Yeah, let's try one of them. Let me go uh, blueberry. Blueberry. Let's get it, dude. Yeah. Anything else you want to check yeah. out? Some set to pop. Uh, uh, good type. These are solventless, 100 milligrams. I got pineapple, guava, mango. If you want to try something different as well. Yeah. So, uh, pineapple. Pineapple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, what I, that's, my, that's where I was going to go. Let's get it, dude. You look at the swag, the Ziploc special. <laughs> $30 an ounce. What? $30 an ounce, bro. <laughs> It's swag, it says Oh it. my God, it does. And it comes in a Ziploc, like you would get that's, in the parking lot. That's and, uh, crazy. <laughs> in the good old even, days. It even says it too, swag. <laughs> Not the best. <laughs> I hate smoking, but it'll work. <laughs> we got some Doja Honeydew gummies. We got the Hamsa Blueberry gummies. We got some Good Tide Pineapple gummies. It looks like you like some gummies. <laughs> we got the West Coast Pure Lemon Zest. What is this? Lemon Twist, because he likes the Sativa Terps and the Hash Walkers. Is he ready for it? Is he? I don't know. We're gonna Let's find see. out. We'll find out we're, right now. We're Let's gonna go. find out right now. Thank you, Apothecary. Thank you. Host Adam Vilt showed out right here for another amazing episode of 
the Getting High Wish Show uh, video and podcast. You know, shout out to Dad Woods, always keeping us lit. Uh, the most consistent, reliable, disposable, rechargeable vape pens on the market. We love Dad Woods. Make sure you check them out because I know a lot of y'all like pens. They got everything too, rosin, resin, and distillate, so they're there for your budget. Of course, tickling the ebonies and ivories. Kentron out there making it happen with the steak face. I see you, Ken. Yes, sir. How you feeling? Feeling good. Yeah. It's a good Tuesday. It is a good Taco Tuesday. Taco okay. Tuesday. Actually, today was Macho Tuesday for me. I got to try some exclusive new items over at Shakey's, bro. Yeah. They invited me to the HQ to check their new uh, munchies, yeah. and uh, I'm excited, dude. I'm excited. You like ma- you like nachos? I do like nachos. You like potatoes? Potatoes. Now imagine like potato nachos, but with their mojo potatoes. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Listen, it, okay. we can talk okay. about this later. We got a legend in the building, dude. I don't oh, want to keep him on. waiting. Uh, you know, I've known, I've worked with him, I think, over two, look, fuck, like, has it been 20 years, 15 years, dude? Maybe longer? I think I started 2001, so that was yeah. basically 23 years 20. ago, dude. Oh, my <laughs> God, where have I been, dude? Uh, he is a legend in radio, uh, you know, did some afternoon drives, did some morning drives, did some AM drives. Right now, he is at KLOS 95.5. Uh, one of the biggest classic rock stations out here. I'm sure your parents listen to it. If you don't know, I know a lot of this younger generation don't really know what a radio is because they're streaming everything now. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> my, my kids don't even listen to the radio. Yeah. I'm like, uh, and it's the same with TV. Kind of face for everything, kids. Like they don't even know what TV channels are. Right. They just know what like networks are. Uh, you might have seen him on TV doing some daily gossip. He doesn't do it anymore on Dish Nation. I know that was That's out for a Dish minute, Nation. dude. Yeah. Uh, he does a lot of his own content. Has a weed brand. Has an alcohol brand. Has a like. Just everything, everything that a man needs, he does, dude. We got Frank, the general of Frank Army, <laughs> Frank Kramer in the building, dude. Thank you so much, Adam. Great to see you. I'm glad you're still doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I thought for sure it wouldn't last. Hey, man. <laughs> Listen, what's, what's crazy is when I was doing some uh, guest research, I just typed in like Frank Kramer on YouTube. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of the Dish Nation stuff came up with some of the KLOS radio stuff. But, like, when you type in Frank Kramer interview, an old-ass interview comes up of you pulling up on our 50th po- on my 50th podcast when I had a co-host. Oh, my dude. God. And look at how this is right when I was doing it in the living room right. in the valley on a couch. Look at you. Uh, <laughs> you baby. Evo Adam. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> But yeah, we were uh, getting lit, talking shit. Uh, that was a long time ago, and a lot of shit has changed since then. Even Randy Wayne was in that, dude. Yeah, Randy. There's Randy. Yeah. Who is now in radio. But Randy's gone AM, right? Isn't he like He's AM. Isn't he being serious now? No. Don't you got to take yourself seriously? Seriously, radio? Yeah, yeah. I did it for a year, and I had to get out. Yeah, I know, because... Uh, so, we a uh, little history. Uh, I worked for uh, KLSX, which was like a CBS Viacom network. It was one of the biggest... Talk sta- it was only FM talk station, so it was number right. one talk. And it was uh, it had a great audience, great listening, but corporate decided to go top 40 with it, and everyone went their separate ways. But I, you know, started there when I was 18. Right. Like, right out of high school. And being a part of that radio... I, I started in 2000. You started... So, and so you started in 2001. I started yeah, the year after. Right. Because, can I tell you my first memory? Of, Le- of, of the station of, or me? Of, of like my interaction with you guys. Okay. I don't know if you remember this, but you guys used to do live remotes yeah. where you would go to like locations and do live shows. There'd be bars, restaurants. You did a live event at City Walk at a restaurant that I don't think is there anymore. It was like a Latin restaurant. Okay. Uh, it was in the back of City Walk, and you guys were taking questions from the audience. And I asked a question, and my question was asking Heidi to go to prom with me. <laughs> I, I know you probably don't remember this, but I remember this. And I kindly got declined. No, yeah. Of course, because I didn't know she was, you know. Back then, nobody knew. Yeah. That I was, didn't know she was part of, yeah. That was part of the mystery whether Heidi was, uh, like, what was her um, sexuality? Yeah, if she was straight or gay. And uh, I didn't know. I asked her. She kind of, you know, was cute about it, but I kindly got declined, which is kind of <laughs> heartbreaking because I thought it'd be cool. You know, it'd be like, cool, like, look, radio host goes to prom. Oh, she'd go now. She would no, now. No one's asking her out now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. She, she would, she'd go to the opening of an envelope with, on a date. Yo, yo. <laughs> Listen, I love that. See, what Frank, what's great about Frank is he's like so real, no filter, and I think people appreciate it because a lot of people are scared now. Yeah, I've been doing this for, well, actually, my 30th anniversary happened. I started doing radio in uh, 1993. 
And so, uh, yeah, I was doing more. Like school? Or? No, I never went. Uh, not one lesson. Uh, but I went to I went to school to study geology. What? Yeah, like the earth? I was out there busting up rocks in, 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 the, in the mountains. Not, not like crack rock, like real rock. But like real rocks. Yeah, I was, I was going into geology, and then I, I got uh, invited to uh, by Frosty, who was my, my partner for the longest time, you know. He invited me to come do the show with him for a week in my last spring break of college. And I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to Florida because I'm from Indiana originally. And so out there, he goes to Florida for spring break. Now I'm going to Florida. And he's like, uh, come up to Milwaukee. That's where he was. I'll buy, I'll, I'll, I'll buy all your beer. Because I was like, I'm going to Florida at Jason Tail. Yeah. And he's like, hey, there's women in Milwaukee. It's hot. No, it but he didn't describe them. Yeah. <laughs> or else I, I might not be in radio if he had. So I go up there and. Uh, so you said, forget Florida, I'm going to Milwaukee. Yeah, I'm like, okay. He Exciting. Said, buy all the beer. I go up there and I do the show with him for a week because his morning partner got fired. He had to do something with online porn or something. So, Whoa. Yeah, his morning partner got fired. And, and he wanted a co host. Yeah, because he was, I mean, it'd been like maybe six weeks, two two months. He's doing it by himself, and he's like, I'm dying on the air by myself. I need to bounce something right, off somebody. Right, right. And we'd always been, you know, buddies. And how'd you know, Fro how do you meet Frosty? Uh, same hometown. I mean, a, I grew, a town of 5,000 people, so you just kind of know everybody in the town. And uh, so, yeah, I went up there to the show with him for a week. At the end of the week, they offered me a job to be his morning partner. And I was like, can you wait six weeks? I graduate college in six weeks. They're like, no, we're in ratings period. I have no idea what they're talking about because I had, like, not one lesson. And... Uh, so I quit school with six weeks to go. You had six weeks left, and you're like, "Fuck it." I never went back. What? I don't. I didn't get my degree. I had still one, one half a semester, and I I have a degree. You think you could get it now, or is that credit's too old? No, I think it would ruin my story. You know what I mean? It's, it's like <laughs> I went back to school. It'd be like uh, uh, now it'd be like Rodney Dangerfield back to school. So wait, what? So so. You were into the earth and studying, or what were you going to be? What were you trying to do? I was going to go into the water business, hydrology. I was going to make uh, develop uh, water systems for uh, new developments and, and sewers and stuff. What? Yeah, <laughs> That's so, I know. so random. Yeah, I, I spent uh, like, like a, a summer in Montana by myself out in the mountains. I was mapping the mountains above and below the ground, and I had to carry like a forty-four Magnum on me in case it rolled up on a grizzly or something like that. Yeah, it was. It was some gnarly shit, but I was like out in the out in the boons by myself, and just so like setting up camp and yeah. eating top ramen. Yeah, that's that, it, it. Was it was great because I didn't want to work indoors. And I ended up working in in radio. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so I had to be indoors the whole time. Completely but, opposite. But I, I mean, I, I lucked out. It's like when I mean, you get that opportunity and you grab that, you know, that, that yeah. ring. Uh, I always knew I could go back and finish school. I mean, hell, I had six weeks to go. Right. So you know. I took the, took if the you chance. had to, oh, I, I was actually fired four weeks after I was hired. A so, month in, they're like, "Bye." Yeah, because they're like, "Can you wait six weeks?" And they said no, so I took the job. Four weeks later, like they they fired my boss. A new guy comes in. Oh, tries to do that corporate cleanup. Fires everybody. I'm like, "Hey, motherfucker, I just got here." Yeah. He's like, well, welcome to radio. And then it was like two weeks later. I mean, I actually, I got to go back and see my class graduate, feeling like a total asshole. And uh, two weeks later, I uh, ended up in Denver, Colorado. And that's when uh, it really blew up. Got noticed, and I was there for f f four years. And that was you and Frosty. Me and Frosty, and uh, Jamie White. And then uh, got noticed for uh, for Los Angeles because they were buying stations. They bought Star ninety eight point seven out here. So you started on Star out here. Yeah. Ninety eight point. That was like the Ryan Seacrest morning show when Ryan, he first started. Ryan Seacrest was the afternoon drive. Oh time yeah, he had the bleached guy. blonde tips. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. A little Ryan. A little Seacrest. Ryan. I'm proud of him though. Seriously, he's, killing he's done it. well for himself. What? He, he like that guy. He is the hardest working man in Hollywood. Doesn't he host like forty seven shows? And now he's the new host of Wheel of Fortune. Oh what? Say Jack retired and, and Ryan Seacrest got man, the gig. Man, there's other people out here trying to get jobs. I know. Ryan. Adam Ill hosting Wheel of Fortune would have been what? great. No. That would be amazing. I would, I'm a great game show host. They, they got uh, the spots where it's like you got to smoke a bowl. Yeah. Get, <laughs> Spin the wheel. Oh, listen, lose a turn, smoke a bowl. I've hosted game shows. We've done like yeah. like 420 themed hey, game shows. Your game show you just had with me. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was like a little skit. Yeah, yeah. natural. Yeah. So natural. It was a good time, though. You did great. You won. Not too bad. I never did play radio. I mean, music. I was never a DJ. I was always a talk show. You always talk. Uh, but there was a time, I remember you did segments like, should I stay or should I go? Oh, yeah. And where you actually looked for new artists. I still do it. Yeah. To, to this day. I think I started that bit in 2003. And uh, it's uh, stay or go. And it was, we were on an all talk station, like you said. We were, we were a talk station with no music i'm a rock station with no music we yeah it was great talks. it was like howard stern in the mornings and yeah like tom Lycus in the after yeah. like middays it, it was just 
it was great. It's never been duplicated ever since no. then. That was just a once in a lifetime wonderful station. I was very fortunate to work marketing and promo oh with that. God. That, that was such a great time. Playboy mansions and strip clubs. And... They didn't have the Playboy mansion anymore. They didn't have parties anymore. It's crazy. It was crazy. It was a different time. Yeah, a different time. You couldn't even do yeah. that stuff now. But uh, but yeah, I was always looking for uh, you know new bits and trying to get a new audience. And so I said, hey, we're going to do more for new music than any other talk station in town. That's when I started opening it up to to different bands to come on and play their music for you. And you just say stay or go if you like to. Yeah. Not. And so now still doing it. Still like once I'm a year have like a, a, a bash. Because I remember I used to do those events. You just say that stay. Like all the winners would perform live. Right. Yeah. And there you have like record execs and all these right. important music Trying people. Trying to make it look all good. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing really happened, but it was. I think a, the Dirty Heads. Dirty Heads? The dirty Heads were on stay or go back in the day. And then uh, there was obviously a stay. Yeah, they're killing it. They just headlined like a music festival this yeah. past weekend. So that's, that was one of our... Uh, discoveries! Yeah, one of our discoveries came through the Frosty Addy and Frank show. That's crazy, dude, yeah. that, that little journey into radio. Because, like, you didn't grow up saying, like, I'm going to be a radio host. No. No. In Indiana, that's like entertainment ain't shit. You're like, I'm studying the earth. I'm going to bring water to people. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was from a full farm country. And so I was just always outdoors doing stuff. And so I never even thought about it. Never, like I said, never took one class. But in, today, you can do whatever you want, you know, as long as you uh, enjoy doing it. And I found what, exactly what I love to do. Is that 30 fucking years? Do you believe it's that been, shit? That's crazy. Do you 30? believe that? No, no. <laughs> And, and I think it's because I, like you said, I kind of get away with murder on, on my show, the things I say and stuff. It seems I, like it's got a lot lax because you guys be saying some things. I'm like, damn, they could talk about that on the radio, like a I lot always, of innuendos. I wonder how we still get away with it. Yeah. But I think it's because I've been doing it for so long, and and they know it's just tongue in cheek, and it's not, you know, not being serious. I never, yeah. I've never done stand up comedy, but as far as just the sit down four hours a day improv, you know, and, and having somebody like Heidi and, and Frosty and the people I've worked with who are just fantastic at that stuff. And you find yeah. that lightning in a bottle and you just run with it. And so they made me, you know, better at what I do. I can think, you know, You're super quick, lightning fast. Quick. And, you know, when I get to work, put my headphones on, something, I mean, something else has happened. Just, I mean, it's like for four hours a day. It turns on. Like putting on a football helmet or whatever. It's just like. In your zone. No matter what. Because I don't have a morning show to wake up to. You are the morning show. Nobody gets me out of bed when I'm having a bad day. <laughs> I'm like, that's me. And I could be having a shit day. And I'm like, oh, cr-. then it just happens. Yeah. And I go, what'd you, what'd you talk about today? I'm like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> but it ended up working out. I've been doing it for so long. It's just a, a natural. It's, it's just uh it, it was really inspiring to me too, you know, right out of high school, getting this job and then seeing you guys do your work, like being, you know, I, I would do, listen, I did a lot of these events and there were two events that like stood out to me the most. Yeah. Uh, one was the Frosty Hattie and Frank show uh, uh, appearance at a casino that you guys did. And oh God. I think you might know what I'm talking about. And the other one was, it was like a Howard Stern, Gary Delabate appearance and they did some wild shit. Uh, between the two, they both like still stick in my mind. The Gary Delabate bit was anal ring toss. Oh yeah, where they had these girls come and they put these fucking like straight sticks in their butt, <laughs> and then people were throwing rings and trying to get it around the stick. I'm like, we're in a fucking mattress store, and y'all are playing anal ring toss. Like, there's a family trying to buy a bed right over there. It was a wild. I'm like yeah. a fucking punk ass 19 year old. Like, what is what is life? Is this the real world? <laughs> no, it was like living in a cartoon, like an, an X rated cartoon. Yeah, and like, cause these fans were so loyal, they were ready. And then the the other event that I always remember, we were on top of a casino. I think it was Morongo. Yeah. And um, people were just wild, getting drunk at like noon, and you like dared someone to drink your mustache. Yeah. And you shaved your mustache in a shot glass, and homie just came and chugged it like it was nothing, and was proud <laughs> of it, like like he accomplished something. I was like, did this motherfucker just chug mustache hair? That's, I mean, that that was just like pushing the limit how far we could possibly go. And I didn't think anybody would do that because somebody did have those like those little hand clippers, you know? So I was like, all right, you know, go ahead and drink my sash. Sure enough, this guy, his name is Brad. I still remember his name. And I didn't ever see him again. Oh. Like he came to, to that, that event, drank Ch- my mustache. Cause I did, I, I, yeah. clipped, I clipped it off clean in a shot glass with a shot of Jack Daniels. Ooh. And so he drank that and then I, disappeared. I mean, disappeared. Maybe, I, he's probably dead. Maybe there's some magical things that happen when you chug a fucking <laughs> mustache hair, dude. And that's the same. That's the same night we had uh, Heidi's panties in a giant martini glass. Yeah. 
and people were, auction, were auctioning off her Pantini. And these three lesbians bought it. They all stuck straws in there. Started. Oh my! You don't know, remember that? God, yeah, oh. dude. There was there were oh. so many memories, uh, you know, doing between the Frosty, Hattie, and Frank show. I can the and the Tom Likas parties with the light cats, and then oh, yeah. the Tim Conway Jr. poker events, and the most. Like, <laughs> there was a lot. They just don't do it like that anymore. No, man, it's it's a, it was a whole different time, and I'm very fortunate and grateful to be a part of that because it taught me a lot doing like what I do now, and you know now I host events and throw stuff like those events that we were a part of inspire me to do that same shit but in the right. cannabis space and bring that and element. you're doing it man i'm so proud of you what stop yeah. it chill, I mean, chill. <laughs> it goes ryan seacrest than you as far as people i'm proud of in life listen i'm out here dude you ryan, are, yeah hey, you are grinding ryan call okay. me ryan Weedcrest. I, I came in here i mean you, your setup is is fantastic oh thank you we're, we're, I'm we're trying I'm we're trying trying. To, trying to get some cameras in my studio Listen, we could talk. We got a nice little production team here, dude. Yeah, off, huh? off from different walks of life, dude. They work for major, major corporations, and they're they're here helping me out because they believe in it. Yeah, I started the uh, the, the crack house, and so this is a live streaming. Uh, Bro, you did radio so station. much. I remember you also did a show in like City Walk. You guys had like a studio. Yeah, it was it like Toad Hop or something. Yeah, Toad Hop Network. Yeah, uh, that was that was back in 2010. Bro, what the when fuck? the first like podcast networks were yeah. coming out, and I was producing like. 40 shows out of my garage. I mean, I had a house, but I had a back house that had a garage guest, uh, little pool house. And so I put a studio in the pool house, had the garage be the green room, and had this, you know, people coming in and out of there. I had, uh, uh, remember Nick Ritchie from The Dirty? Yeah, he yeah. used to do the scandalous website. Yeah, exactly. yeah, put everyone on blast. So he had he had a show in my backyard. Oh damn, it that was so, it was so crazy seeing the people walk by the window because we sitting there with my family. I got my my kids. We're having dinner. Here comes a couple porn stars. Yeah. OnlyFans before OnlyFans. Yeah, exactly. Here comes Robin <laughs> Big walking down. <laughs> damn. Oh, my, How'd like, you feel about having like strangers come to your house? Though? I loved it. Yeah. That was that, <laughs> that was the most fun. I I mean that that I've had because. You know, we got fired. You know, everybody was number number one. The station, you said, the corporate station yeah. said, let's go something different. And so everybody got fired. And, and this podcasting thing is relatively new. And so I was like, I got these little kids, man. I got to support them. And so I I went all in on it. And then, uh, yeah, moved from the garage up to Universal City Walk in the uh, Lovett's Comedy Club. Yeah. Built a studio up there. Started doing stage shows. It, like I said, it was the most fun. You were like a pioneer in this shit, dude. You were like a, adjusted so quick when, you know, radio was like kind of declining. And then you're like, let me adjust, jump on this digital shit. Let me still do what I do. And then you got, you know, one of the biggest rock stations in L.A. That's, and that's why. Because I, I was digitally miles ahead of them. They were like, we don't have really a digital part. We know what we're doing. So I had uh, a subscription model. My, my podcast webcast was uh, like four ninety five a month. It still, it still exists. But I was the so only, let me find out you're doing Patreon before Patreon was I, around. I was. I, I was like, I was thinking about doing like creating it for more than just myself. I was like, I bet more people would do this. And the next thing you know, Patreon happens. I'm like, see? Yeah. There you go. But um, but yeah, I don't know what the fuck I was saying. I'm just talking about uh, you know. <laughs> I'm not even high yet. Being able to adjust so and adapt. Moment. I'm and getting stay. high off of you. <laughs> uh, we got oh, to go to apothecary. Oh, yeah. Adjust and adapt. Adjusting and adapting to the times being, you know, everyone's changing and it's crazy, dude. This world's crazy the way it is. Well, so here you are in Indiana, a little small ass town, five thousand people. Was Frosty like in the same school as you, a neighborhood kid? Or, like, no, he was older than me. He was ten years older than I was. That's kind of weird, no. Well, not not in a small town. Okay. Like I said, you just kind of know everybody. And so he uh, was going to school, and he was also on the radio. So when I was in high school... You were listening to him. Yeah, it was Frosty and RJ in the morning. And so, yeah, he was doing it, and then he would... Uh, so I just knew it from that. So you knew it from that, and uh, what were you doing? Were you, like, a, a good kid in school? I figured, like, if you're getting into geology and you want to study the earth, I figured you, like, paid attention. Were you... Um, no, I was a partier back then, too. That's why I like... Uh, I, uh... Used to get high with my buddy who picked me up on the wrestling team. He'd drive, drive me to school. So about sophomore year, we'd be getting high going to school. In Indiana? In the morning, yeah. What kind of weed do you have in Indiana? Fucking like homegrown. Uh, look like that swag that I oh, showed shit. you. <laughs> I can't believe they're actually bagging that stuff up and selling it. What? People love it. They do? Yeah. Really? I guess I'm just spoiled rotten. I mean, not everyone has our tolerance. You know, the older heads like that. You know, some people don't want some I real guess... strong stuff. Like you saw you have your beverages in there. Some are 50 oh. milligrams. Some are 2 milligrams. I brought, I brought you gifts. What? Yeah. We got presents? See, this is my the crack bag. My, my crack bag. 
K R A K. I did a collaboration with yogurtland.com. Okay. So we got these things made. No, it's not. I, I drew that with marker. But no, it looks great. It's an official. <laughs> it's an official, like gorilla it's, style. It, it's re <laughs> reuse, <laughs> recycle. But yeah, I brought you some drinks. Yeah. Oh, because you you are in the cannabis space now, right? Yeah. I know. I got some of your Blaze Mota. It was like a it was like a candy flavor. Oh, what is this? That's the Calihana. I saw you that. Uh, it was in the shop. In the shop. This is the uh, malt liquor beverage, no liquor. Yeah, that one. Uh, I I actually tried all, all these. The, the Mexican. I actually did a YouTube video where I tried Hazy all the beverages. Triple. Oh, you did? Yeah, I sampled. Oh, them I know all. you did that. The the, I, mo the motelada. I did a blind taste test, so I just had cups in front of me and I had to guess what the drinks were and yeah? I had to match them up to the can. So how we do? You, you I, I, like I did him. great with the flavor profile, um, but then yeah. what I did at the end, because I had a bunch of shots left over, is I just poured them all into one cup, oh. and then I just chugged that. What's the, the, the suicide? Oh, the suicide, yeah. Oh, or yeah. the undead. Or unalive, the unaliving. Yeah, the bodega? Pear. Oh, no. This is this is delish. Who, who flavors anything pear, dude? I know. No one does. I got a pear and a pineapple. There's a reason why. Who eats fucking pears, dude? When was the last time you actually had a pear? I know. I think I bought one the other day. So I'm like, who the fuck eats pears? I had the same question. That's what the fuck what I'm saying. And then I, I took a bite or two of it, and I was like, uh-uh, that's why no one eats pears. It's got some weird grit to it's it. It's like a texture thing. Yeah, it's like a, a sandy apple. Yeah, it's like a... It's like it's not the. That's what I'm saying. And people so, make yeah. like but, the only time you eat pears is in like a charcuterie board or like a salad. There's never like so when if you have a fruit basket, there's a pear, an orange, a banana, an apple. No one's grabbing the fucking pear. But crack that open and taste it. You haven't tasted it yet. Pears, it's good actually. It's really good. Everyone goes, oh, you gotta have the Asian pears. I'm like, no, I'm talking about basic Bartlett pears, the green pears. I don't need no exotic fruit. Is the Asian pears the ones wearing those panties? <laughs> You know what I mean? They got the, the white pears. Yeah, they got on the it. white the white mesh there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. <laughs> I see my, I want my pears all dressed up in lingerie and shit. <laughs> I'm like, all right. My pears are sexy, dude. <laughs> Show me a couple of pears. Uh, you, you, is this your favorite? Th that's very good. You got to shake it. A pineapple flavor. I think you just like a turn it upside down. For a yeah, second. I usually do that with all drinks anyway. But, but uh, you I'm, want me to try this? You know, chat's gonna give me shit if I drink the pear because I have, I have like a fuck pear campaign. Why you get really? Yeah, dude. I mean, I, I thought you were kind of aggressive on the pear flavor. I didn't know you was like. No, a continuous, I just don't a continuous understand. Thing. Like pears, like the worst fruit. No, it's not in anyone's top three. No one ever eats it. I, I saw like a pear flavored candy. No one like, makes a pear fucking pie because I, I make a mean apple pie. Have you had a pear pie? No, I no gonna, I exactly. Gonna, I, I said, you know, I should make a pear pie. And everybody was like, no, fuck that. Don't make a pear pie. <laughs> like, you can't make it good. No. You just can't. So try it and tell me. I mean, I might tr I might change your mind on this particular pear flavor. It's pear cooler, which reminds me of cactus cooler. So I'll try it because it's pear and lime and tarragon. What is that? Is that like a herb? Yeah. That that uh, cuts any of the... Uh... Speaking of herbs, after I take this, here's right, it. Let me know. Not too bad, eh? It's all right. <laughs> it's, it's all right. right. It's not my terpene profile, but it's okay. <laughs> and this is uh, Chronique, the uh, it's the champagne. Chronique. Yeah, it's uh, champagne, ten milligrams a can. What? So it's bubbly. Yeah, it's bubbly. And look at all your beverages. I know. There you go. I, 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 I should put them all back in the bag. Uh, oh, what's your, anyone want to try one? Anyone want to drink? Who wants one? Anyone this, want one? This is. This you is want my, a pair? You want to try the pair? There's a pair. Try the pair. There's some cups if you guys want to split it. We got some of these. Uh, can I ask you about Malort? Yes. Speaking of herbs, what is Malort? I've seen you talk about it, bring it up. I've seen you guys smell it, and it's... Malort is the worst-tasting liquor in the world. And uh, I was introduced to it from a, a guy that was my producer out of Chicago. And that's where it's, it's from, is Cook County. And during the Prohibition, when alcohol was illegal, they would make Malort and they got it around the, the feds because, you know, feds would drink it and go, well, no one's drinking that shit for fun because it's awful. And so they, they pass it off as a medicine. But they still make it today, Jepson's Malort, and it, it tastes like, oh, mm, my God. I mean, I love their campaigns. If you looked it up, it's like, when you want to unfriend somebody, you know, you know <laughs> Malort. They know they're disgusting. Oh, yeah, and they, they totally own in the into the disgusting part. of It's like, kick your mouth in the balls, Malort. And so... It became on the show just like a Malort challenge because it's so awful and everybody hates it. It tastes like, you ever puke so much that there's nothing left to puke and then all of a sudden this weird that shit like comes out? That like stomach acid? Yeah. That white, yeah. That weird bile? Yeah. 
<laughs> that was like egg yolk. Don't say that's what it tastes like. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What? And then, well, guess what? No, I'm just oh, playing. I'm just playing. Oh, my God. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm just playing. No. I couldn't do that. I, I, could, I could have brought a bottle in, but I like it too much. No. Man, so you really enjoy Is it like one of those acquired, once you drink it enough, no. you start? No. It's still disgusting? Yes. You never get used to it. <laughs> and for people who are like, when you first drink it, it's like, well, that ain't bad. It, it flowers. It flowers in your mouth. And you're just like, oh. So it just, fuck. like, expand, like you just, yeah. Ugh. Like if, if you had someone piss in a tire that was out in the desert for a long time and got to soak and sit and then you'd pour that off into a, a glass that's what that tastes like that's out of control it's, it's the worst stuff but then I, I uh, you couldn't get it in California we had to order it from Chicago to keep doing these challenges where you'd be doing a little trivia contest right. if you missed your question you had to do a shot of a lord and everybody does it's just like Bleh. and so um the uh, owner, like the, the person who owns Malort, Malort, contacted me and was like, um, I want to make you an official uh, Malort ambassador. Let's go. Yeah. So so I got it. Uh, in, got the sponsorship. Yeah, because when I was doing it so much on the show, people were curious about trying it. I'm like, you can't. You got to order it from Chicago. And so now we got it, we got it out here. In, Love uh, it. In the stores now. But you got it. You did the distro. Like, yo, you get the shit on the shelf. So I'll get you. It's, That's out of control. Can, yeah. Go buy a bottle. I get a what? <laughs> <laughs> That's like, Shakey's, what's up? That's right, Shakey's. <laughs> Yeah, do you want more from the Getting High With Show? Well, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash the Getting High With Show where you get more content from the Getting High With Show, beyond the scene look, exclusive content, and we get to thank you at the end of every episode. Plus, you are automatically entered into our monthly giveaways. That's right, we're giving back to our Patreon subs. So join today, patreon.com slash the Getting High With Show. Now, let's get higher. By the way, uh, uh, I brought up that I was... Um, because I had to leave the, the little tasting a little early today. Um, and I said, because I got the show, one person didn't know, a little younger, but then I told you know, one of the older person, and they, she lit up like, well, you, got, you better go. Huh? I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, I've been out here as, since 1997. So, yeah, most of my career has been in Los Angeles. Several different stations, but, uh, but yeah, I get all the time. It's like, uh, I started listening when my mom was driving me to school. And I'm now I'm driving my kids to school. I'm still listening, so I'm like, I'm just glad I can still do yeah. this. That I'm that they're allowing me to do it. But you know, you got to be ready, like you are right here, adjusting you know, you and it, adapting. Yeah, take it into your own hands. Yeah, because I'm not gonna be caught with my dick in my hand anymore. Because you know, like I said, I created Crack. Crack is uh, a streaming 24/7 channel. It's like curated music and live podcast. Like I said I want to get you on there at some point. I got a whole performance space, stage. You could have events there for, your, for your, everybody in your chat. Bring them down. What? Smoke out. Uh, oh, listen. Seriously. You brought it up on podcast, so you know now it's got to happen because they're gonna be bugging me about it. Oh so yeah. Let's. Uh, we could totally make it happen. We could utilize the space. I do a lot of events and stuff. So. I just had uh, Phil X and the drills down there. Phil X from Bon Jovi. Okay. Is he down there and? Uh, and it's 420 friendly. Uh yeah. He's the outside. <laughs> Outside, inside, inside. <laughs> it's all it's all good. It's in North Hollywood. Every place is four twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go. I'm in NoHo all the time. You ever go to Archie's out there? That little bodega deli, open till three a.m. No, they got like sandwiches and munchies. No, I'm never in NoHo. Been. Yeah, no, I try to get out of there as fast as I can. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, don't want to linger. Oh man, uh, dude. So coming out of Indiana. You said you were on wrestling. You did sports. You yeah, were active? I, was, I was a wrestler in uh, in high school. While getting high, yeah. yeah. Did they know? Were you allowed? Was was cannabis like very looked down on in Indiana? Uh, yeah. I mean, at the time, I mean, I was in high school in the uh, '80s, and so there was like only a few people that were with the stoners at the school. You know what I mean? And so, uh, yeah, one of those guys had to be on my wrestling team, and you know. Did, were you ever curious about cannabis? Were you one of those like, don't do drugs, they're bad? <laughs> <laughs> I'm an athlete. I'm a good student. I'm gonna be a geologist. No, no, no. I was always down for for trying anything. It's like I, I was more of a, a drinker back in the day. Well, yeah, you back got in, your own fucking weed in, beverages. Back and in the Midwest, you drinking Malort and fucking <laughs> shaving your mustache into Jack and. Yeah, I got uh, that beer too, Dig Tissy. <laughs> I saw that. Dig Tissy's Dig coming back out. Oh my god, dude! For a summer drop, it's a cream ale. Dig Tussie Cream Ale. <laughs> your, mark, it, it your branding was, is great. It was named after a, a bit we used to do on the show. Uh, we had a 
a producer who told us that his mom was a ventriloquist. I'm like, what? You know, you never meet somebody who, as a, who knows a ventriloquist or even their parent raised him. I go, so what would you get? I mean, she would go on the road. He's like, no, like she would do it as like a hobby. And then we'd do like church shows and stuff with our ventriloquist dummies. I go, so she taught you how to do it? It's like, yeah. He goes, I go, well, teach us, you know, how to be ventriloquist, which is, you know, obviously being able to speak without moving your lips. Yeah. And so he's like, okay. And I go, wait a second. I know there's one thing you cannot say without moving your lips, and that's big pussy. And he goes, dig tussy. I go, you said dig tussy. And so fast forward to that Halloween, <laughs> and I don't know if you know Willie Tyler and Lester. He was a famous ventriloquist, uh, a black ventriloquist, but it had the little doll dummy. And so Heidi comes in dressed as that guy, Willie Tyler and Lester, and a dig tussy embroidered on a shirt. So it was, it's now it was dig tussy the doll. So it kind of took on that persona, and we had dig tussy a ventriloquist dummy on the show for probably you know three years. Damn, and as now a character on the show, and it morphed into a. And so yeah, I got a call from a from a brewery, and he goes, "Hey, I'd love to do a beer after some old bit you used to do." I'm like, "Really? Which one?" It's like dig tussy. <laughs> I want to dig to some cream ale. I'm like, I'm in. I mean, it was the shortest pitch known to man. I'm, like, I'm in. Let me get it. Whatever I need to do. <laughs> and so on the can, I don't have a can here, but on the can, it uh, on the back of the labeling where it says, you know, don't drink it if you're pregnant. There's a little tiny silhouette of that dummy. It's like a little at least Easter like, egg on each can of dig to little character. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. Little Easter egg. Damn, so, look, I know you like drinking as well. Uh, there was a lot of shows where you get wasted. Oh, yeah. Uh, especially back in the days when I was working with you. Um, How many I, times did you have to take me home? <laughs> I took you home a couple of times. Fuck, man. <laughs> Just drop me off on the lawn and yeah. then tear out of there. Uh, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes we'd have to make sure you make it in the door. Yeah, in the station vehicle sometimes. Sometimes in the personal oh, yeah. vehicle. Exactly. Yeah. To... But you used to, also used to do a show where you would have a CHP uh, officer... Or like some law enforcement yeah. officer in there, and you guys would get as drunk as you can throughout the show. Like take a shot every after I don't know ten minutes or something, right. and blow into a breathalyzer to prove how drunk someone gets to show people not to drink and drive because it's irresponsible. But you guys are just fucking getting wasted on the show <laughs> <laughs> in front of law enforcement officers. I'm like what? It was what the is life? Best public service announcement <laughs> that we ever came up with to say, hey, listen, you might be a little drunker than you think, and we'll show you. And so, yeah, we started d drinking, and uh, we kept a, a, tote bo a, to a whiteboard. A tally, a, yeah. This tally going on, and had about four LAPD officers in there. And, uh, and we also had a, a drunk driving attorney. Remember Miles Elder? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Miles was there, so it was kind of like he could, you know, if you needed an attorney, call him. But try not to drink and drive with the LAPD. And so they had to give us breathalyzers. And we would just get so shit canned. By the end, you know, it was just out of hand. Yeah. And we were just being so obnoxious with these cops. And I'm so surprised you guys were so professional with your language while being so wasted. That's what's so weird. I'm like, how? They're so professional. It's just. Yeah. Like I said about put, put the me, headphones make the headphones it happen. On. Yeah. When I'm there, when I'm at the station, when I see the, you know, the light on the, on the Mike, microphone, yeah. it's just like, yeah, you just go into. It's rules mode. It's like auto autopilot. Right. You just make it happen. It's just second nature. That's a, so. What is like? What's like a basic day in the life for you? Are you wake? Is it live every morning? Live every morning. Yeah. I, I get up. Are you go? Are you like from the station or do you do it from the house? Because no, I know a lot of people. I do it from the station. I know a lot of people do like mobile. Heidi's doing that right now. She's doing it from La Quinta. She lives out there in the desert. Oh, it must be nice. So yeah, she gets on a golf course or something. Yeah, shit? she gets to roll out, and as she put her uh, studio inside the closet, so she's back in the closet. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> she, got, she got out, and they keep pulling her back. Put in. it back in. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so she's doing from La Quinta, and I I moved from Los Angeles up to uh, Ventura. Oof. So and, and I, well, it's I, nice out there, but and I I drive to Burbank every day. Every morning. But. I get up at three o'clock in the morning. Oh, so that one one is open. Right. So there's nobody out. Every, yeah. Everybody's hauling ass. And even, I mean, everybody up that time has got to get someplace. And even the cops. So yeah, no one's... They'll roll up next to you and go, what the fuck? 90? <laughs> and you're like, oh, shit. Sorry, dude. And then and then, and then they pass you yeah. and blow by. You know, but, but yeah, I get to work about, uh, about four. Oof. And then I just get ready for the show. And you guys go live at? Go live at, uh, at six. Okay. So you give yourself some time to 
adjust and prepare and yeah, yeah. look at some news, get some get some yeah stuff, uh, current stuff, and the stuff I didn't get to the day before. And you got producers that like pull up things as well, or is it mostly you guys? Um, as it's mostly me. What? Yeah, I I produce every single show, the whole the whole show. Damn, Heidi must be nice. <laughs> Fuck, just wake up, go in the closet, and just what do you want to talk about, Frank? I'm here. <laughs> that, that's right. Not, but she's fantastic. I don't want her. No, any, I love Heidi. No, I don't want her in any other role because, I, because that's how we work together. It's like I can just. How did you guys find her, Heidi? And she's such a, like I said, a great improvisational yeah. comedian actress that that she's always there, and I can just trust her with whatever. So, you know, I'm trying to build something that's going to entertain her, and you know, knowing that what she's going to do is going to entertain me. Back. Right. So most of the time. We're playing this tennis match of just let's just keep having fucking fun. Yeah, and that's we've been together for twenty four years now. That's she started working with me at KLSX that in the year two thousand. Really? Yeah, that was her first gig with me. She was. It, it, she was wasn't she like a traffic or she weather? Was, or she something? was traffic on Star that first station. Yeah, uh, with Ryan Seacrest. Yeah. So she, she was just doing like the traffic report. Yeah, so and we had a girl on that show, but then uh, me and Frosty got fired, and she stayed, and Danny Bonaducci, I don't know if you remember him. I he, remember him. He, 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 he ended up coming show. to Adam Carolla. Yeah. Hey, so, right, Danny Bonaducci. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that and, guy was wild. And so, yeah, we were looking, uh, KLSX wanted to hire us, and they said, we like that dynamic of the two guys and one girl. I'm like, you sick fucks. Yeah. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> I like the dynamic of like a step a stepbrother and a stepsister. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So Indiana things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. I love Indiana. So, uh, so, so yeah, we, we did a little test show late at night. Who was that guy late at night who was a porn star? He was on overnights, and he would have g- girls come in, and they would basically just. His, I remember it was there was John and, Jeff, uh, John and Jeff. John, John and Jeff. I remember they Before were late. John like, and Jeff. Uh, yeah, you might not know Ricky that. Rack. No, but uh, I don't remember. But yeah. So you got Heidi, and then days. she came on, and it was just like a fit, and you guys. Yeah, I said that's like, it. It, Yeah, I don't. We do those jobs; they were never really assigned. It's just like I said, that's just how it works. Because I don't want her to know anything, because I want it to be a surprise, general, I, organic. I want her to hear it the first time. The audience is hearing it right. for the first time, and so she's just live there with me, and so. You know, she got that big bombastic laugh. Yeah, that is fantastic, and so you know, and, that's, and that's what that's what you need is something like that. And you know, people are like, oh my god, that laugh. But everybody, I mean, in my family, I grew up with my aunt Carol who had that big laugh, and so my family would basically just try to make Carol laugh because every time she fucking laugh, everybody start laughing. Yeah, and so, it's a good time. And so I grew up, you know, with a funny family, and so yeah, so it just came naturally when you know when we do the radio. And she's got that laugh, and so fuck. It makes that, happen. That, that's, Are you? Uh, that's my goal. You got siblings? I got uh, a sister, older sister. Uh, she was doing morning radio as well. What? Where? <laughs> in, in Evansville, Indiana. Oh, re- tri-state area. Was she did it before you, or did you guys? No, she did it after me. Okay. Yeah, she was. Were you, uh, you, you you inspired her? Well, she was a uh, like a director in the theater and plays. Okay. And so she went on the radio one day. As to promote this upcoming show in town that she was directing, and so and, and she had a chemistry with the morning guy there, and he's like, "You should just come, come be back. my partner." Yeah. Kind of the weird way that I got into it. Right. It's like you know, why don't you just do this? And so she said okay, and she did morning radio there for 15 years. What? Yeah, she just recently retired and, and is doing her own it's thing. In the family. And yeah, but it was like, yeah, we were both doing morning radio at the same time. It's like probably never, you know, another brother sister. Yeah, that's. That's Did probably that. like a, a good a good fact. And I have a little sister too, who's uh, yeah she she does late night radio. No, I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she no she's a she's a speech pathologist, so she does something with okay. speech. Okay, so uh, yeah. talking, that's crazy. Okay, so you grew up make make the aunt laugh. So are you middle child? Middle okay. child, yeah, only so. son. Had all girl cousins. What? And you had your older sister and younger sister friends that yeah. were oh yeah always around. Oh my god. <laughs> My, my older sister was four years older than me. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so when I was like a freshman in high school, she they, was the seniors. So yeah. All the senior girls. All the div- like, yeah. Why don't you have a sleep out here at our house tonight, Leslie? Invite all your friends over. When's the next sleepover? I'll invite all my buddies <laughs> over. We'll camp out in the backyard. Looking through the window. Yeah. 
Are they gonna start the pillow fight? <laughs> <laughs> That's still happening. Remember that was like the image of oh, yeah. like the girl, the, the, pil pillow, the pil fights. pillow panty fight yeah. with the feathers. That going was like the always air. the late 1900 movie sequences <laughs> when they were like in a room. Like, is this really happening? And then you talk to the ladies later, like we never did that. There was not one yeah. time we ever had a pillow fight in our underwear with feathers flying everywhere. <laughs> like, this, what? Did, this did not happen in real life. Okay, so early morning, 4 a.m., you're at the studio, yeah. you do some research, you get topics, you go through with DMs, emails. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I got certain things that I hit up every single day. And it's just like, yeah. Sources. Part, yeah, part of that routine uh, that help out with that a lot. Not like an outside, you know, uh, an outside producer, really. It's not part of the show. It gives, but I, I get a bunch of stuff, and I'm like, okay, that, that's, Whack. that's a great topic. That's cool. This is good. This is good. Fuck you. Fuck you. And You're cool. Some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so then, yeah, till 10 a.m., and then off the air at 10. And uh, after rush hour. Yeah. So I, I'm <laughs> back on the road at one o'clock in the afternoon driving home. I'm done with my day. And I get home, and I, I live on the beach now. So kick off the that's shoes. Where, that's where I don't know if you ever saw the uh, Frank Haitian was my, my my strain that came out. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, had the had the hat with the pot. Yeah, yeah. That Smoke little, a joint in yeah, your mouth. Joint. Yeah, and it was uh, based on a picture that was taken on on Ventura Beach. You just I'm, chilling. Yeah, and I got, that became the logo for Frank Haitian. That's crazy. Did you ever think like what was the moment where you're like, all right, radio is my career. This is gonna be what I'm doing because it seems like you just kind of randomly stumbled into it and then it just kind of kept. You know, kept you paid, and then you got fired, but you stayed with it. You didn't like. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna go study rocks. Fuck this shit. The uh, <laughs> what what kept me in was uh, the guy who fired me. He, uh, well, the program director got fired. The guy who hired me, and he was a fucking weed smoker. So I wouldn't even be in fucking radio if it wasn't for weed. To tell you the Shout truth. Shout out weed, baby. To tell you the truth. So he liked you because you smoked weed. Yeah. So I, Frosty told me that his boss, the program director was a big weed smoker and so was his girlfriend his girlfriend did the overnight shift he and, and i lived with a guy who dealt weed at the time <laughs> and, he, and uh I, he goes i go give me the best shit you got i'm going up there to see frosty so in the end it's finest this, yeah so <laughs> this this certain strain that i had i don't know crushed him loved it so i think he hired me not that i was uh, natural great right off the bat, you know. <laughs> I didn't even want to be there really, and so uh, he wanted to hire the plug. He, so he... Yeah, he, he wanted <laughs> he wanted the connection. Oh shit! Oh, my bad. He went, I just bust my head on that. You know, he wanted he wanted the connection to the weed, so that's why I got the job. So you know, <laughs> so, surpri so surprise, surprise, that fucker gets fired four weeks later, Damn. and then a new guy comes in and then fires everybody. Doesn't even know what's going on. And I'm like, hey, I quit school. He's like, well, welcome to radio. So I was going to go in and talk to the GM, yeah. which is like the guy above this guy. And I, I wanted an explanation because I was like, dude. What the fuck? Or is you going to do anything to help a kid out? Because, I mean, I quit school for this and I kind of got really, really super fucked. And uh, he goes, tell you what, why don't you go back to Podunk, Indiana and do some radio back there? And I'm like, you fucker. So at that moment when I went back to Podunk, Indiana, and I got and I got a call, Frosty got a call from Denver to come out there and do that. And so ever since then, I'll shout him out, Steve Sinecrappy, you cocksucker. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah, fuck you, Steve no, but, Nutsucker. But, but you know what really? What was his name? Steve Nutsucker? No, Sinecrappy. Oh, he's still a big motherfucker in radio. Yeah. And uh, on the on a lower market though, not in the LA market. Yeah. I, and so, <laughs> and the thing is, yeah, we just got. Uh, nominated to be nominated for the rock for the radio hall of fame. What? Yeah, Congrats! I know. Hell huh? yeah, that's dope. But we didn't get in. We, that, what? We, we didn't get into the. No we were nominated to be nominated, but they didn't nominate you guys. They got other people. Yeah, of the of the nominees, they took those people, and so. Yeah, we, there's still opportunity. It was just an opportunity to be, uh, you know. You guys are still doing to be it. Nominated. Again. Yeah. <laughs> you guys were like a suggestion for a nomination. Yeah, they're like, how about these guys? And no. That's what. That's pretty much what the decision making was. Who? No. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Who's playing the fucking horn? We got the. <laughs> we got that Adrian on the that's keys right now, uh, making so, it yeah, happen. That guy kept me in it because I mean, otherwise I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna go back and finish up. But I was like, no, he doesn't think I can do it. You know, and so I was like, I'm gonna prove him wrong. So here, you go. damn, that's and here you are. You made it happen. 
fuck you. You fired me and now look at me, dog. I'm on a bigger network than you. Uh, so you're driving to and from work. Uh, got got a good little ways to go, a couple of miles. Uh, do you listen to anything in the car? What are you what's in what what are you listening to? Uh, that that varies. Uh, sometimes I'll listen to myself. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But there is a station on, in, in Los Angeles. It's KLOS HD2. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's just the best of your guys' show. It's just, yeah, it's that show that day that's run 24 hour loop. And so sometimes I'll, I'll go there to hear, like, hear it from a different perspective, like listen from the car right. to go, oh, that didn't work out or, you know, something wrong with that. That or, went too long. Well, that was too short. Yeah, yeah. Too long, too short. Or it's like, we, we don't be aware of the room and not talking over one another. It's right. that kind of shit. Little notes, yeah. homework. It's that de- it's the detail stuff. Love so it. after being in it so long, it's like uh, I haven't forgot about that. That's that's very very important, and I'm and I'm never taking it for granted. I mean, I, I named my network Toad Hop Network because Toad Hop was the name of this smaller town. I was from town of five thousand. This is about a town of forty. Forty? Yeah. And it was called Toad Hop. Yeah, because it was it was down in the river bottom. There were more frogs over there than people. Yeah, because <laughs> the river the river bottom would flood. Uh, this whole neighborhood, so everybody's house would be like, in, uh, you know, underwater, and then the, then the water would go down, and then that's when all the toads and everything would be out. And so they called the whole place Toad Hop. Just had one stop sign. And, and, and the, people live there, even though their yeah. house would get flooded every fucking. People live there. Why? What? I don't know. But I had to drive through that little town to get to I seventy, which is the highway out to Los Angeles, out to Denver. So I named it for that little town, so I'd never forget where I came from. Toad Hop. Toad Hop. What? You like frogs? Uh, what's it, for eating? Just in general, you like? In general? Yeah, I don't know. Do you have like a frog tattoo or like? No, no, no. I got a gay bat. <laughs> he pointed to the butterfly and said he got a gay. Bat. What? What? Yeah. What was that? Why you got what? what what's the butterfly story or the gay bat story? <laughs> No, it's it is a butterfly. Me, and my me, and my daughter had the same one. Okay, that's cute. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I win it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's a flamboyant th- bat. Then I had I have this one, which was uh, we were in in the office after work, and we'll sit down as a group sometimes and just talk about stuff and and throw I'll, I'll throw some more ex- topics out there to see how it goes, and I might bring them up the next day. And so uh, so I was like, I'm gonna get another tattoo, and. I just want to create it right now. So let's just start naming stuff and I'll put it on my arm. And so this creative session around the room goes, how about a grizzly bear? All right, a grizzly bear. Uh, surfing on a great white shark. All right, with a with a snake or, or in his mouth while he's like smoking a cigar or the, and the snake smoking a cigar. And this thing kept building and building and building and building. And, and the bear shooting an AK-47. It's America. And there it is. Damn. <laughs> this fucking made it happen. A grizzly bear. I thought that was an octopus wrapped around. But it's a, he's eating a snake. It's a snake with the... With with the, with the with the Slip, smoking the AK. Sing and the shooting the AK. And there's a great... <laughs> yeah, that's America. And it's, yeah, it's got the American flag yeah. headband. The headband. He's out here hunting. So I was like, okay. But you just got the whole, the whole fucking lower arm. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was that was some time right that there. That was uh, yeah. That was wasn't like, just. <laughs> there's a lot of what have I done? <laughs> and a there's lot of time to think about that. There's smokes and waves and there's a whole bunch of shit going oh, on. Oh yeah, I could use some lotion too. Jesus That's Christ, I'm fucking scaling up like a lizard. <laughs> get lizard fucking people in here. What? So you listen to yourself? Who else? What else? You listen to music? You listen? Uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll listen to uh, like the n- new rock. Okay. If I listen to Spotify, it's like they'll have categories like, okay, this is new rock. And, okay. And so I'll see what's coming out and what it's sounding like. And it's starting to sound, there's, there's some bands coming out that are have that old school uh, sound. Sort of classic rock flavor. That, you know, for a while there in like the 2000s, it really kind of fucking sucked. Yeah. And so, but now it seems like they're getting those like those roots again. Getting it back. Everything, getting it back. Everything recycles, even fashion. I see everyone dressing like the 90s right now. It's crazy. That's, that's right. Neon's coming back. Do you do you consume content? Are you like? Do you watch TV or movie or? I know you. Yeah. I mean, as far as like Netflix, on Netflix and yeah. shit. Then I usually fall asleep on the couch. I'm at that point in my life. But I'm like, <laughs> I'll go out to the beach, smoke a joint, and I'll start a show and be like, and just be out. He's literal Netflix and chill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Literal. <laughs> literal. Uh, what do you? Is it like documentaries or TV shows? You just put on like I'm gonna fall asleep, so it don't matter. It, it Let me just matter. put on yeah. whatever they suggest. Some, some of that bullshit, too. <laughs> like, uh, like the, the circle. I pay. I, I pay you to help <laughs> me fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I sub to help me fall asleep. Thank you, Netflix. 
that's cool. So you just watch TV to fall asleep? I like that, dude. And then you listen to some new music in yourself. Yeah, let's listen to music. Yeah, but most of the time I'm just like, because I, 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 I'm headphones all the time. I just want them off. So I'm more in my own headspace. Yeah, I feel it though. And so, and I've been consuming a lot more uh, THC than smoking it. Like eating in, it. In the drinks. Yeah, if you're just listening to this, you didn't get to see, but if you're watching, you know, shout out to everyone. Uh, tune in to wherever you're at, watching or listening on Spotify, Amazon, Google. I know I didn't say it in the beginning, but we appreciate you. Shout out to the live streamers too. Uh, uh, when we went to the apothecary to uh, get your prize, you got a lot of edibles. I did a lot of gu- you're like I like gummies. Let me I like gummies. Let me get a couple pre rolls. Because I, I, I don't know when I when I drink it or consume it, it's like it just it just stays with me longer. So that's probably a, a, as far as smoking it, it's just a different experience for me. Well, here's a new oh experience. Oh my god, this is great. Because I know I, I get you this. some last time, right? Yes, the last time I saw you. Where was that? That we were we were at this. I think it was Row House in like yeah. Bum Funk, wherever we were. Yeah, and. uh but your weed was on the shelf and my weed was on the shelf and I was like, yo, what kind of moment is this right now? Did you like, smoke Blaze Mota? Yeah, of what? course. It was like did a it was like a LCD, it was like a like a candy. Yeah, my son rolled me up uh, your bag and oh, yeah? into little, little minis. Did yeah. he like it? Oh yeah, I loved it. I loved it too. Does he smoke? Yeah. You smoke with your son? How's yeah. that been? That's been fine. I mean, he's you know, he's twenty years old now. And so yeah, he's been he's been smoked for a long time. He was never really a drinker. He was always a smoker. Was he born and raised out here in Cali? Yeah. Yeah, duh. Yeah. He ain't no fucking toad hop Indiana. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drinking strawberry wine. Drinking Malort. Field. Oh, yeah. <laughs> drinking anything he could. Uh, do you, so uh, you when you smoke, do you get like cotton mouth or munchies or anything? What do you usually consume for the highness? Um, what's, what's your go-to snacks? And your at-home snacks. My go-to snacks. Yeah. Are you like a cereal guy? What's your favorite cereal? I'm not really a cereal guy. And I, 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 as far as like, I, see, I grew up with a mother who wouldn't allow us to have like chocolate cereal because she's considered chocolate like a dessert. And so she would never give us like Count Chocula or Chocolate Krispies or that Cookie Crisp shit. Oh, like Cocoa. Okay. All the chocolate cereals. Yeah. So I never really got into that. Damn, that sucks. I know. Because the milk turns into chocolate milk afterwards. That's true. It's like two for one. <laughs> My mom couldn't wrap her mind around that. She's like, fuck that. So what? It was more like eggs and bacon breakfast for you? Yeah. yeah so you're not, what about munchies? Are you like a chips? All right. How about this? We got a road trip. We're driving. We pull over to get some gas and we walk into the... What am I the, What are we getting? What drinks? What snacks? I've been drinking a lot of uh, bang. The energy drink? Yeah. That caffeinated... That, yeah. The high caffeine stuff. Yeah, because I'm old. I get tired, man. I get, I get it. We're going on a road trip. I'm going to stay up at all. I got I to gotta drink a couple bangs. And then... Uh, this is my go-to. Is it? The Red Bulls. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. I got bang and peanut M&Ms. The yellow bag. Uh, yeah, the yellow bag. Do you get the same shit? I mean, I... I do you do chips? Or do you do, like, salty, savory no. things? You just I like, sweet? I like pears. No, oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> the highly underrated fruit. What about Taco Bell? You go. What's your Taco Bell order? Taco Bell order. My God. Um, this is the questions people want to know. Frank. You know what? I'm, yeah, that's <laughs> these fucking stoners. Um, I'm curious, bro. I, I, no cereal. My no. personality. I, I, I panic when I have choice, and it's so too much. I, I throw out like whatever I see first. And for some reason, every time I go into Baskin Robbins and it's 31 flavors, and I know I want to get something different, I go, uh, they come to me, you know, finally, and they go, so what can I get you? I'm like, uh, strawberry. I'm like, why the fuck did I say strawberry? And then I'm too much of a pussy to fucking take the order back and go, no, 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 seriously, I'll take, I'll take that cop, whatever. I always sell, sell strawberry every fucking time. I panic. So at Taco Bell, whatever the special is. So they got that box. Yeah, the I'll, Chalupa I'll, box. I'll get that fucking family box. Got yeah. 50 tacos in it. That's the first thing I saw. I'm like, give me that family box. I got a Little League team at home. <laughs> I eat the whole thing. I'm going to eat the whole thing. And that's the thing, too. I will eat the whole fucking yeah. thing. Yeah? I'm, I'm a finisher. So it's like we start something. It, like it, Whether it be beer or a bottle or whatever or joint, it's like um, we got to finish it. There's no leftovers in my world. <laughs> it's like, take it fuck. all. I don't it. give a fuck. We just we got a case of beer. We're drinking the whole fucking thing tonight. We open that bottle of Malort. You better <laughs> tell oh, that, that's, baby. That's the thing. It's like, no, fuck, put that away. <laughs> yeah. We'll crack that and put it away. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that anymore. No, no more Malort. Damn. Do you? Are you still up to date with your geology facts? Like, can you go name rocks and stones and like? I mean, I mean, not nearly as what. No, 
what I used to, but I, I like going boondocking in my Jeep and get out there where there's just nothing again. And I miss it when I'm out there by myself. And that's nice too, because it's just, I mean, you're out there by yourself, there's not a sound. Mushrooms? Oh, I love mushrooms. Yeah? Yeah. Are I, you like a micro or macro? Like, I, do you take them? I, um, to get fucked up, or do you take them to add a little like sparkle to your life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I I like taking them to the point where it's like when I focus on something, then I can go, okay, you know, it's just that focus and to see that like the curtains are moving. Right, more vivid. But, yeah, vivid colors. I, I get, more yeah, I, get focus. To, I get to that point. But, yeah, uh, yeah, a little sparkle. That's great. Yeah. Sparkle. Have you have you have you had the uh, mushroom vape? A vaporizer of mushroom? Yeah. That doesn't sound delicious. It sounds kind of weird. It was, yeah, it was flavored, and, and I think I took it. Are you sure it was mushroom and not DMT? Because I know there's DMT pens. And no, they, it said mushroom. A mushroom pen? <laughs> I, I believe it. Look, there's like there's like ecstasy mushroom gummies that are out there now, and like acid fucking mushroom rosin gummies <laughs> that are out there. Yeah. Like they're just it's mixing almost everything. Too confusing. I mean, shit. But you take me into you know the dispensary here. I know that's why you're like, oh, give me that, give me like, that. Yeah, that. he's like, excuse me, panic. I'm like, I'll, I'll take that that joint. <laughs> well, so I had to just. Dis- he's you know, like, what do you want? You want lemon? You want you want? I'm like, uh, well, because it's, it's all about you. Blueberries? I mean, what the fuck? I mean, I know, but you saw me panic. I can't shop. But, I'll go buy a car and I will buy the one that's in the fucking window. <laughs> just the, give the, me that the one. one that's on the spinning stage. Why does that happen? I can fucking get that thing. I'm like, I'll take that one. Huh? What does that stem from? Is it because you used to I go think- to the shopping with your mom and sisters and you'd be embarrassed and you just want to like get it over with? Yeah, I think so. Is I that just? just- I, 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 it was like a, a, an anxiety, a weird anxiety. Like some people have shopping addictions where they have to go shop and they want to look and like figure I, out get the best. Yeah, I don't, You're like, I I don't want that. to. It's Let like, me get out of here. I'm gonna get it and get the fuck out. Yeah. Damn. I was like that where it was sex a lot too. <laughs> Let me get it in and be done. I'm done. Yeah, I, I mean, just want that. All I, right. I would. <laughs> that's one big complaint about me in bed is that um, I will have my pants back on before. <laughs> that's not true. Before I'm done coming. What? That's not true. Don't ask me why I know this. But why I, would you know that? I did some research as yeah. I do, and I watched a couple of videos, <laughs> and there was a clip where someone rated you an 11 out of 10. Oh yeah. Is that a true story? That, that is a true story. That's so funny. you're lying right now? No, or, but, but, or was that just with that person? Not that it was quick, but <laughs> that I would be dressed right away, like when I was done. Oh, when the when oh. the action when the job was complete. The, as far as cuddle time or you know, let's pillow talk it. Yeah. And, oh. No, I I was up, uh, pants, shoes, and then I lay back down <laughs> in my clothes. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, do you want more from the Getting High With Show? Well, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash the Getting High With Show where you get more content from the Getting High With Show, beyond the scene look, exclusive content, and we get to thank you at the end of every episode. Plus, you are automatically entered into our monthly giveaways. That's right, we're giving back to our Patreon subs. So join today, patreon.com slash the Getting High With Show. Now, let's get higher. I, got, I put the denim back on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got my jacket on. What are you doing? I'm done. I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm, <laughs> where are we going? <laughs> I don't know. What's, yeah. That might be a fucked up story of my past, though. No, but... We gotta put our clothes back on before, before somebody walks in. Uh, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Indiana things. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Uncle Jim was a wet kisser. What? Uncle Jim? I mean, there was a lot of things I learned about you. Uh... You know, I saw a couple of interviews that you did. You were in a cryo chamber getting interviewed, asking questions. Oh, and yeah. You said some interesting answers while freezing your balls off. That's a weird thing. Is that, thing, is that still a thing? <laughs> that it's, now it's like cold plunge. Cold plunging. Now it's like the wet cold. It's yeah. It's that dry cold. Which is a little more intense. Yeah, it's like the, wet the surface cold. of uh, Neptune. Oh, the, you're doing the cold plunge now? Cause I did cold plunge. I dab in the cold plunge. You dab it. I get in the cold plunge and then I'll take some dab hits. How long do you stay in there? Like th- I try to do like three minutes. Three minutes. Yeah, dabbing yeah. kind of helps, but you gotta like get the breathing in. What's the temperature really of the water? Thirty-seven. God damn, I'm not there yet. I'm not in the thirties yet. It's hard. I don't do it all the time. Hell no. But when I do, people I, doing it every day. I know. Do you think doing the dabs helps you tolerate? No, it? I just did it for like content. I do weed. I do weed and workout. Do you, are you are you physical at all? Do you stay health? Do you do fitness? I mean, I know you chill on the beach. Do you like walk, um, run, yeah, work out? Well, I've been I've been doing uh, calisthenics. Okay, that's cool. Because yeah, I'm uh, I'm 53 years old, so I don't know how. Oh, much, you look great. Thank you. I don't know how much longer. Like every now and then, I'll get some weird twinge in a tendon. I'm like, god damn. 
snap my Achilles just sitting yeah. here on the couch. But uh, so I, I don't push it too far. But uh, but yeah, I still try to, you know, get out. I like to do weed and workouts. Uh, I used to do a class. Some people in the room have attended where we uh, uh, add can- consuming cannabis while working out. So we'll do like wall sit dabs where you like do a wall sit or take like a bong grip. While Is this do- like one one set? Yeah, yeah. I'll have a gym. <laughs> I'll, have, I'll have the gym and I'll have like 10. I'll have like 10 people 10 stations? sign up. No, I'll have like 10 people sign up oh, okay. and then we'll do an actual workout, but I'll incorporate when we do the stations, smoking I know, at the station. how many stations can we possibly do? I'm uh, doing dab wall sits. Uh, what, yeah, what am do, I doing after that? Put, yeah, uh, there's, I mean, it's depending on how many people smoke, there are. Like a bong hit set yeah, up. Yeah. So we'll do like uh, like uh, puffing planks, you know, where you're in a plank position and instead of shoulder taps, you'll puff. Oh, yeah. Right? And then, uh, how long does this workout usually last? Uh, we do, I do it, it was like an hour, but it, was, it wasn't smoking the whole time. We did oh, like Jesus stretching <laughs> and I did like some weight lifting, but then like the stations is where the cannabis consumption. I know. Came uh, in. Be real. Have you been on the, uh, Dr. Green Thumb? I hosted that network for three years. Did you? Be real TV. Yeah. I had my own show on there you too. You did? Mm-hmm. The Look show was here, on that man. show. So you what, bad blood? Uh, we're cordial. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I, I came on your show first. You did. Yeah, you did come on he, my podcast because he wanted uh, me to come on that one where he covers up the low rider with the hot bo- or the smoke box or whatever. Smoke box. You should do it. I'm just like, oh fuck. Man. You should do it, but invite me with you. Be like, hey, can I bring a friend? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. And I'll show up. Like, what's up, guys? I was in a smoke box before, but I was in the back seat. Oh yeah. Yeah. But I hosted the Dr. Green Thumb show for three years. Um, and when B-Real would go on tour, I would be like le- ho- leading it. And then I did my own show. This show, the Getting High With show, was on B-Real TV. Fuck that was like that. 2000, what, like 14, 15? Pretty 16. incestuous in the, in the business of knowing who's doing it and who's not. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm older and I come from radio, so I kind of took what I've learned f- being in radio for 10 years and applying it to like, I started podcasting in 2009, remember? Right. So I, you know, we were pioneers in this and I was just one of the first to do it. There was no influencer back when we were doing this right. shit. There was no content creators, you know, Facebook just started in 2009. So and there I think was really you, no money. There like wasn't. Back in the day. Back was, then there was, when, though. When they didn't really know. Well, yes, we had to do well, live listen, stuff. You know, if shows. Motolato wants to have product placement all the time on the show, we can make it happen. <laughs> Don't sleep on the Motolato available in most of your dispensaries. Check it out. If you like See. the taste of uh, Michelada, you can get the Motolata and make it a little medicated. Add some tahini and urine. And that's also the chichilada. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got the chichilada. No, I don't have the chichi. Oh. But the chichilada is 50 milligrams. I got you. This one is uh, 20 for you lightweights. For the lightweights out yeah, there. Yeah, like this uh, like this bodega pear cooler. It even got me drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know you had a hate for pears. That's just a, I gotta, that's just a fun uh So at my house, my streaming room in my house, I have a painting in the back that says fuck pears and it like glows in the dark and it's like a 3d rendition pear it's just a little thing i got <laughs> yeah because i thought the reaction to the flavor was pretty extreme when you first pulled it out like <laughs> pear <laughs> like what the hell man i'm very what, passionate what's bro. A pear do to you i'm very passionate dude did you go out with a pear-shaped girl once or something break your heart no i, I have no hate no hate on pear shapes no <laughs> <laughs> just small up it's top just, with a big booty. It's just like what you said. Pears are not the best fruits. So anyone to flavor something after a pear is just like wild. Like why would you do it? Yeah, why'd we keep eating them? Do you eat it with a skin, right? Like an apple? That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. you're supposed to. I heard people eat kiwis like that too. No way. Yeah, with the skin. Hair and all? Hair. <laughs> what you eat the the what don't blackberries have hairs or some shit raspberries? But they got little they, hairs they, too. They got, they got some tiny hairs. Yeah, little <laughs> little hairs, dude. Peaches, <laughs> peach fuzz. Peach fuzz. It's a little yeah. There's some hairy things out there that you consume. Oh, chill, yeah. chill. Uh, can I ask you a couple questions? Of course, that's what we're doing. We're doing. Uh, <laughs> if you were a superhero, if you had a superhero power, what would your superhero power be, dude? Oh shit, a superhero anything, power. Anything, anything, anything. You can make it up. I know there's so like many uh, like oh I just make up the superpower. I do have a superpower though, and I think that's why I drink so much is that I don't get hangovers. What? Yeah. Never. Never. It's like Bro. you know, I, as party, I can party hard all night and do everything possible, and I'll wake up the next day and be totally fine. Everybody's like, how in the fuck Still? are you doing this? Yeah, to this day, never got one. 
So I'm like, but you mix a lot of liquor too. I've seen you do like tequila, do Jack, do fucking yeah. uh, whiskey, vodka. Like you're mixing everything up. I'm like, what? Yeah, that's why I could. Because huh? beers in between each one. Not even vomit. Don't, don't even vomit. Bro, you would look wrecked. Like I'm like, how is this fool even <laughs> like walking right now? And you'd be stumbling. I'm like, oh, this fool's gonna be having a fucked up day morning. Oh my god. I remember, no. I remember when you guys dropped me off. At my remember? house in Burbank. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I heard the story from the neighborhood. Because you guys dropped me off, and I think that you got out of there pretty quickly. And it was like the end. Yeah, we didn't watch you go in the, that night. And, and I think you. Uh, this was in the afternoon, though, because we were a midday show. Yeah, so I 12 think to 3. You, so at 3 o'clock, I was just yeah. out of it. And you guys drove me home, and you put me out. I, I walked out, and then the ice cream truck was there. <laughs> And all the little kids with the ice cream truck. I was like, ah, ice cream for everybody. And I ended up like, you know, giving the guy a hundred bucks and taking care of all the neighbor kids. And then I passed out on the lawn. <laughs> of your house. Yeah. Didn't even make it in. Didn't even make it and in. And the kids are eating ice cream looking at you. They're all just sitting on me like a bench. <laughs> 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 Mommy, cream. he bought us popsicles. <laughs> I know. This, this drunk man bought us popsicles. And were they aware of like who you were? Did they know what yeah. you did? So yeah. they're like, oh, I mean, that's Frank. Yeah. It, yeah. Exactly. I still hear that a lot. Oh, that's Frank. Oh my God. But. Yeah. I love you did a segment where it was like uh, let's be frank or something. It was those rapid fire questions, and you're just like, bam, like no hesitation, just like one word, like fuck, bam, bam. I'm like, this fool just doesn't give a fuck. I love, and it's like national TV, and you're just saying the most outlandish shit. That was like the uh, the other day we had some ratings come in uh, for the morning show, and they weren't good. You know, it's like every, every now and then, you know, it's yeah. cyclical. You're gonna have good books, and there's good ratings, and sometimes no one, you know, no one's there. And so this time, no one was there, and the boss is like, you know. Hey, you mean you have a meeting, you know, on Friday to talk about these ratings? And I was like, what the fuck? So I'm on the air going, you know, he wants to have a meeting because we suck. You know, the ratings are awful. And I said, if he had any balls, he'd come in and have a meeting in here. Ooh. This is the president of the company. Ooh. <laughs> and then he ended up coming in. But he had no idea that I'd said that. But I pulled him in. I was like, so let's have this meeting. He goes, oh, we can't do this here. It's not appropriate. I'm like, come on. Let's hear it. You know, and so we just kept go you know, going back and forth. It's like, no, no, I can't do it here. But I was like, I pulled him in. I was like, you got the biggest fucking balls. Just that not giving two shits. And I don't. I'm supposed to, I mean, I used to. I used to give a lot of shit. Yeah, I used to care. And no, I don't. Because I mean, you've been you, through it, man. If you, like, want, if you want to listen, listen. If you don't want to listen, don't fucking listen. There's so much content out there right there now. There is so much content. And I'm streaming platforms. And I'm not uh, trying to kill myself t to get any other part of that. I mean, like I said, I created crack. That way, if, if this ever goes down... And I'm not on KLOS anymore. I got some place to land. And you got and, and I have fresh you know, content my, yeah, ready. And I got my you know my diehards that that have been with me since uh, 2010 when I was and they're still VIPs. The army. So yeah, the army's there. So it's like, bro, and I can do what the fuck I want. I mean, right now I got a show at 11 o'clock uh, every Wednesday live on on Crack, and uh, it's called Till the Beer's Gone. So we get fucking beer. We just drink the whole fucking case of beer and just shoot the shit and uh, have a time in my life. Let me know. Absolutely. I'll try to drink. Uh, drink I'll bring the motoladas and the chicholadas. <laughs> <laughs> Add it with the real beer. Do you do that? Do you mix the? No. Have you? Has, has anyone tried to mix the like uh, motas with the real beers to see what it was like? I'm sure there are people pouring vodka in that. Oof. Just to make a little bloody mary. That's exciting. Bloody, uh, kind of, in a weird way. But uh, but yeah, but I'll smoke and then and sip whiskey. I like doing that. Ice. Yeah. On the rock? Yeah. One, on one, the rock. One crack? Yes. One, the one circular rock. One big, the $40 rock? Did, did, did you just, see that, how they were selling the ice at <laughs> Air, Air One? One for like $40? For eight? Eight, eight, eight cubes for eight. Eight, 40 bucks. It's, it lasts longer. <laughs> That's <such> bullshit. <laughs> well, they got a gallon of milk right now. It's 20 bucks. Oh, my God. At they Air got One. a smoothie for like 30 Oh, the, uh, Before hey, tax. the Haley Bieber uh, I don't even smoothie. know. I, I, re, I don't even go in there, dude. I refuse. There's one down the street from me, and I refuse. Yeah, somebody tried to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich there and just bought, like, the art artisan bread, the jelly, but it's like they had so much expensive shit there. It was like $150 to fucking make a peanut butter and jelly. Ooh, get that. Where are people getting this money, dude? Where <laughs> I is know. that? I thought it was yeah. exactly like we're broke. Yeah. Somebody's bought $150 fucking peanut butter and jelly. That's so why I think we're in a simulation, $40 bro. ice. It's just not real. Yeah, you think so? I don't think... 
I think we're like a little petri dish in someone else's universe, and they're just having fun with us. Because shit doesn't seem like I see these businesses. I'm like, how are they open? Like, who goes into that store? Like, how are they affording rent right now on Ventura Boulevard? On like and what they're selling? Just yeah, like. Who, who's buying? There's no clothing store out there that's like selling enough clothes. I've, I've been to a lot of people's homes and I haven't seen like those rugs that are always in the rug stores. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many fucking rug stores. Everybody should have at least one of these fucking rugs. And there's there, nobody has that shit. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck they're laundering. Yeah, it's just weird. I just feel like. <laughs> I feel like, like, do you think there's other species that are out there? Like the magnet store. I thought a fucking magnet Mag- store yeah. was a joke. A container store. A whole fucking place for magnets. <laughs> That's crazy. <Just> socks. <laughs> a sock store. Like, you're selling enough socks to Le- a- Called lefts only. It was just a left <laughs> sock. Like, how are you staying open? Is there really a magnet store? They just sell magnets? Yeah, that was... I bet you there, there was like a tourist other, shit. Yeah, Universal City Walk. Yeah. Where, but that's like different, yeah. It, it, it reminds me, it's like... A little kiosk, of yeah. Magnets. No, not a kiosk. It was like a... At, at one of the city walk stores. Like, stores. Actually, like they pay rent to yeah. be there to sell magnets. And there's yeah, Bro, yeah. all different types. Oh, look, they have my name. Let me buy it. Yeah. Bro, it, it'd be... How does... See, that's what I'm saying. Like, we're in a simulation. This yeah, shit's not probably. real. I mean, so there's so much... It. So much... Like, listen, I, I don't want to get political, but I just... Uh, like... Just to make a reference, like these people camping out, like they have nothing to do. Like, how do you sit there for three weeks? Like, don't you guys have jobs? Don't you have bills to pay? Like, how are you out here? Yeah, exactly. Doing this, like, they, we're, this is fake. They, you're not real. So you think they're paid? I, I, I think some of them might be employed to do that because not all students. Well, definitely not all students. Have you seen some of them? They're like, they look like they're <laughs> fucking forty-seven years old, like chilling out there. I'm like, hey, my, they might have gone back to school. I mentioned that earlier. I, I mean, I believe that too. Rodney but Daniel. if, if hey, they're whoa. back to school at that age, they're not protesting. They're not at that age. They're like, oh, right. listen to me. They're more. This is like I'm back in school because I need to do something with my life. I'm 47. Like what? <laughs> what? what, what? <laughs> I gotta go back and get that degree. I'm six weeks away. I'm six weeks away. Let me be this <laughs> I geologist get, finally. I gotta get that. <laughs> Let me fall back. <laughs> uh, but I yeah, just like the random shit they show. Like I feel. Especially with AI being as oh, yeah. available as is, I think a lot of these news reporters aren't even real people anymore. They're just like, yeah, they won't be. They're just like people th- that are just reading a, a script because they want the narrative to be told. It's how all the uh, entertainers are worried that oh, AI is going to take their place, to get their likeness, to copy their voice, and now I'm seeing it being embraced because you got the guy Randy Travis, who's a country singer, but he has something fucked up with his vocal cords, so he can't sing anymore. But he's still write music. He's write his own songs. Sure. So they have it's, all his shit that they put into the to, to the AI. generator, and now it knows how he sings, and he just writes his own lyrics, and so it's Can him. T- and people are like, ah, oh, damn, Randy, you know, because he did a very unique voice, right. and so to hear it again with new music, people were accepting that it was it, it is him, an extension of him. Like are you, somebody had a robot voice. And goes, right. I'm Randy Travis, and I want to sing. You're like, no. Well, you still gotta respect his fucking hustle. Little, little, yeah. You know, trying. But you don't be like, shut the fuck up! I can't stand it. Is he really writing it, <laughs> or is it Chat GPT? Or is the AI writing the song too? And Randy's really dead. He's just a head in a jar somewhere. <laughs> it's like Walt Disney, just <laughs> frozen. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy to see yeah. that AI shit. But yeah, are you into? Because I, I saw where you could it could t- take your voice and turn it uh, into different languages. What? Oh yeah. Yeah. So now I'm multilingual now. Let's go. There you go. I mean, you take every one of your shows, shit you've been doing them since, you know, for the last 15 years and just or longer. Translate them. And you put them all in there. And so it'll know your personality and then basically you translate everything. So at some point, when we're long dead and gone, Adam Hill show yeah, will, still, will, well. still, will, still, will still be going. <laughs> People are like, no. <laughs> but, but it's going to be just a pair with long hair. Yeah. Oh, my God. And your glasses. With so, the panty, with the pair so, panties. You know what? That. This is a very pear-shaped face you oh, have chill. on this thing. <laughs> I want to see some, some decorated pears, chat. <laughs> Send it to him in the mail. Where he opens it up, it's a little model. P.O. Box, you know where it is. You know where it is. <laughs> They're like, mail? What the fuck is the mail? Yeah. What? <laughs> Email? You guys are just talking to AI. You're talking about yeah. mail? I'll make it an NFT. <laughs> <laughs> That's something that was supposed to take off, and it's kind of fucking disappeared. NFTs? I, uh, I mean, there's been a lot of... Um, there's been a lot of controversy with NFTs, but it became more of like a community. If you have an NFT with a certain company, you get like exclusive deals and like meetups and stuff, but oh. not all of them 
Not all of them follow through. Some of them just like took money from people and then oh, okay. bye. <laughs> Glad you buy one. No, no, I was never into it, but I know well, people that one. got fucked. No, 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 I, I was never involved. People no. gifted me NFTs and oh, I really? accepted them, but that was about as much as I got involved okay. with the NFTs. Right. Yeah. Why you got some? No, you, no, is there no, a Frank no. Army NFT community? No. No, none Free of that. malort for every fucking member. <laughs> <laughs> if you buy, if you're an NFT yeah. holder, you get malort. Take a shot. Uh, all right. You have you could chill with three people, have dinner, drink some beverages, smoke some weed, dead or alive. Okay. No family though, because so, I know that would be like a first answer. But people that no. we would. <laughs> nah. I don't eat with my family. Uh, see, I, I would probably say Anne Hathaway. Okay, that's still possible. Oh yeah, yeah she's, she's alive. I always thought if I run president, I'm just gonna make her my running mate. Mm. I don't know why, but I think should that be a good. A good duo. So Anne Hathaway. I would also want to sit down with um, Martin Short. Okay, that's still possible. Yeah, these are these people are alive. Okay. Yeah, and also dead. Too alive. And, I, I too said alive any, and anybody, dead. anybody dead or alive. It could be three dead fictional characters, and movie. Then, well, oh, whoever. you know, like dead family. No, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, like, like if I was gonna pick a family member, it's like, and Grandpa. Yeah, <laughs> he died when I was fourteen. Yeah. No, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody dead that I'd want to sit down with. Kobe. Ooh, that's yeah. Kobe uh, and Hathaway and Martin Short. And Martin Short. <laughs> There's quite. The, that's uh, a that's a cool little. It's quite the episode. Chill. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's a cool little. Why? Who are yours? Me. Yeah. Uh, I have Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I have to hear the story now, straight from the source. Dog. You make Anne Hathaway sound like shit now. Well, I. The only reason why I say Jesus, Jesus is because like everyone knows Jesus. Yeah, but where are you story. gonna go from there? You, Jesus was your first choice. Whoever's second. I mean, I can stay biblical and be like Moses and fucking <laughs> fucking Adam and shit. And and Adam, be like get the fucking source. Put right. something on Adam. How they, uh, yeah, yeah but it would probably be Jesus. Uh, would be one. Probably. Uh, you gotta have Adam and then serve apple pie. Yeah, <laughs> just, just rub it in his pear pie. Yeah. Be like fuck apple if you ruin <laughs> yeah. life. You shouldn't have eaten the apple. Should eat the pear. Uh, uh, yeah, but I mean, there's it, it's just it varies all the time too. Who yeah. I'll do? Yeah, I'd probably like to chill with Howard Stern eventually. Yeah, one time. I heard yeah. that he's way less cool than he used to be. Now, yeah, he yeah. Is. I've been listening to him for a long time, and he's very soft now. Yeah, like he's completely uh, changed. So, yeah, in a, in a way. He's got well, kittens maybe. now. You know, baby t- talks to his wife and is very sensitive. And he's got a baby. Uh, no, baby oh, talks, baby his wife. talks to yeah. his wife. Oh man, I yeah. just talked about that today. Like on the show, like on the air, oh, she just... comes on and he's like, "Oh, baby, oh, no. YouTube, YouTube. yeah." That's just sad. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, Howard Stern. I mean, we all owe him so much. Yeah, I mean, he... when he went to Sirius, he made this the highest paying occupation out there was to do, you know, and then with some of the, with you know these podcasts. Yeah. I mean, you get the the Joe Rogans and the Smartlesses that are making a hundred million dollars. Yeah. So it's like it's right there. And so to, to see him like he's totally baby changed. talk on yeah. the fucking air. Oh man, his interviews are great. He yeah, still he's does wonderful great, at that. But like his bit, like he still does outlandish skits and shit. But he's just gotten very like soft. I right. would say it's, he's old, he's like seventy something though. I know, fuck man. But you know, I always want to just chill because he, you know, he was kind of inspir- inspirational in everything I do as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All the respect for him. What? Absolutely. If there was a portal, would you walk into it? I don't know where it's going. Mm-mm. It's just, it's a, just por- a, a random portal. Just a random portal. You're chilling right on the now. beach, and a portal just pulls up. Are you entering it? Anybody in there? I have no clue. Mm, nothing. I'm like, all right. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Not, no. Fuck it. I mean, you when does it happen? The beach getting high. What the, where the fuck am I going? Who knows? You know. Yeah, but I'm, I'm it's an opportunity. Way worse than that. And you would go. I mean, how many? How often does a portal just appear, dude? Like, what? What if it's your sign? Like, this is a sign. You enter this portal, then. Yeah, the, like I did with radio. <laughs> yeah. Take the job, go through the portal, just go through an unknown, dude. Yeah, I'll come <laughs> to a fucking Milwaukee instead of Florida. <laughs> Sounds great. Work on an urban station. It was uh, Hot 102. Oh yeah. W- two what? Two Frosty. W L U M. Me and Frosty. Two two of the whitest guys. Two Indiana folk on an urban uh, morning show. So yeah, we were playing, you know, 
back then. Tupac and everything else. And then talking. And, and we were a couple of white guys in the morning. Rest of the station was uh, had black jocks. And were you guys doing like talk format or were it just like go to the tunes? Uh, it was, it was, there was some music being played. So that was like a, it wasn't quite full on talk show yet, but yeah. When did your passion to like only be talk, when was it? Uh, well, that uh, happened in Denver. Like, because we crushed. I and mean, when it came to, you know, no other influencers. Like when I started radio, it was a great time because the, Influencers or celebrities of say any town that was outside of New York City and Hollywood and Chicago. It was you had the professional athletes like in Denver, you had the Broncos, the Nuggets, they didn't have the Avalanche yet, and just got the Rockies. And so then you had the news p- people, and then you had the radio. And so like locally, you were, you know, a big fish in a small pond. And so we had so many people get tuned into us in Denver where we had like, you know, like half of the entire city listened. So you couldn't go any fucking place. It was weird. You know, I had billboards on the fucking highway. Of your faces and, and shit. And I was, yeah, I was 20, 23, 24 at the time. Oh, so, so you were living. Oh my God. Yeah, Mile High Club. <laughs> Killing the game. <laughs> so much so that I had a billboard on the I 25, as major, you know, interstate. And it said, Wake up with Frank. Everyone else has. Oh. Yeah. And you loved it. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> You're it was, in your 20s, was, like, killing it. It was great. <laughs> and then back then, like, yeah, I'd stay up, and I'd stay out all night long and try to pull those all-nighters where I go on the morning show the next day. I just came from da 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 Yeah. It was down. So the town or, loved you. Or then I would pass out at home, and then I'd, I'd hear the phone ringing. I'm like, oh, shit, because I'd wake up, and the sun be up, and I know it was late for work. I'd answer the phone, it'd be Frosty and, and Jamie on the other line going, Hey, Frank, <laughs> how are you feeling this morning? I'm like, I'm good. Anybody in bed with you? I'm like, yeah. Give her the phone. And so I'd give her the phone. And I'd talk oh. to the chick that I had in bed that night. On the air. On the air. So it was like, that morning. it kind of turned into a bit. Yeah. So yeah, and then just, and then. Like, and so they just, loved it. They loved it. And then girls wanted to be that girl on the phone. Possibly, yes. Yeah. They're like, oh, that's Frank. I want to be on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, back then, I was like, radio? <laughs> this is before internet and but, shit, right? This yeah. is before swiping and, like, apping. Right, and, that was before any... Yeah, I mean, where radio, where they would come and, like, show your titties to be on the air. Yeah, that was, that was like, <laughs> Howard's thing. And so, yeah, being on the air, right? Howard doing the mornings and us doing the middays. So you were Tom following Lucas. Howard. Yeah. Yeah. So it was already, like, a... So, yeah, our lineup was just fucking... And just, it was no rules. Yeah. And killed it in this town. It was, it was an expensive format. Do you play games? Are you competitive? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Like what? Like board games? Are you a board game guy? Uh, last, last board game I played was Clue. Uh-huh. You play Clue? Uh-huh. Yeah? Sometimes. Uh, what about uh, Connect Four? Do you play Connect Four? Connect Four. Yes, yeah. I do play Connect Four. When was the last time you played Connect it's, Four? It's, it's, it's been a minute since I played Connect Four. Yeah. But you know how to play, right? Isn't that the instructions? Connect Four? Yeah, you just got to Connect Four. <laughs> The titles, the instructions of the game. I just want to make sure, dude. Uh, It's so funny. We were talking about the day about card games. And uh, Heidi's like, yeah, I can't ever, like, learn a game by reading the directions. I have to just do a couple rounds, then I I, I know how to play. And I'm like, that's how everybody fucking learns how to play cards. Yeah. You You didn't say anything new. You do a couple couple rounds, you learn how to play. (laughs) Yeah, you can read all day. It's like getting a job. You can learn about it, read a book about it all day. Are you going back to the pair? Yeah, I've been going back to it. I don't want to disrespect you. look at you. It's open and accessible. (laughs) It's close and I'm thirsty. Yeah, it's it's all right. No, it's cool. It's cool. I mean, I'm sure if you like pairs. Oh, shit. My car can get towed? I hope. No, it won't get towed. You get a ticket? I don't know. It's till it. I don't know. It's till eight. What time yeah. is it? Almost nine. Yeah, you should be good. Oh shit! Eight o'clock is the end of my thing. Yeah, so that's fine because that's when it's you could park there. Oh really? Yeah, that's why I told you pulling the lot, bro. You're good. You're chilling. All right, I'm you're good. Chilling. I'm good. If it's out, you're good. You're good now. Uh, while we play this game, do you mind if I go to chat because we got a live right. chat right now to see some questions go. Uh, if they got any questions for you, and uh, and yeah, you ready? Yeah. You want to go first? Or you want me to go first? Uh, let's see. Go ahead. You want me to go first? Oh, damn. Oh, Faked. you're 0 for 1. Faked you out. <laughs> Breakfast ball. All right. All right. Boom. You're going to go there. I'm going to go there. Let me go see what chat says. Um, you don't need to look at chat. I, okay. I got it for you. I got it for you. 
Uh, I was just, uh, actually in the production element. I was like, where is he looking for that? Uh, uh, I have two chats right now. We're, we're live streaming on two platforms. Uh, shout out to Twitch and Cake. Uh, someone just said I'm a closet pear eater, dude. That's fucking crazy, dude. Here to thought. <laughs> He's loving it. <laughs> His attitude has changed for the pear. Uh, I walk out for a few minutes and he's already drinking a pear. Damn, <laughs> look, the chat's full of pear talk, dude. <laughs> See, I told you they're going to go. Not... No, no idea. I'm so glad I brought that one, too. <laughs> I told you they're going to give me shit, bro. It's okay. It's all good. It's all good. I'm not, I'm not going to hear the end of this for a long time, dude. They probably clipped it. They probably saved the fucking video mm -hmm. of me drinking the pear. It's going to be crazy, dog. Uh... What's been like the wildest thing you've uh, got to do in radio? I know we talked about a lot of things. I know I brought up a lot of my highlights and what I remember. Uh, is there anything that like totally stands out? I know the mushroom, the mustache thing must be wild. That, that was that was wild. Have you done like a mushroom broadcast where you've eaten mushrooms no, and did a show? I've never done that. Would that be allowed? Because it's kind of... Uh, I don't know yet. I it's kind of tolerated. Yeah, it's kind of tall. I don't. I don't think they would uh, be down with that. They can be, they're barely down with our drinking shows. They don't even let us do that shit anymore. No. No. They are too change. corporate. Yeah. Not. Not even cannabis. That like it's legal. You celebrate. Hey, look, it's a celebration. We're gonna no. eat some edibles. <laughs> no. HR lady probably wouldn't want that, want that to happen. What? But I, I do remember one time. It was, it was down. Uh, what beach town was that? Redondo or something? And it's right there on the boardwalk, and we were doing a. A show, a live show, at a bar, and the and the windows backed up to the boardwalk, and so people are passing behind us, and I guess at some point, you know, everyone who's at the show is looking at the people behind us in the window because it wasn't covered; it was like it's an open window, and uh, there's no curtain closed, and there was a, a school like a, had a field trip; it was a, a special needs school, and so they're all lined oh, up, shit. lined up on the glass. <laughs> And so I, I look over my shoulder, and there's this, this kid right here. And, I, and as I'm doing this, I just slowly like lean over. And I put my tongue on the glass, and he puts his tongue on the glass, and we start doing this weird like you know French what? just paint a glass. Yeah. Everyone's dying laughing. Oh. <laughs> I'm like visualizing this. I'm like, what? How long ago was this? This was, this uh, this was KLSX. Okay, yeah. Oh, this different time. Different time. Oh, different time. Right now, that would <laughs> no, be totally no. like, that what? Did, that did not happen now. No. Yeah. This is the same day we had the. Um, is that the, the second the, floor? The, the homemade or snow. Or was it the first floor? They had the hill of homemade snow. Okay. That day. Okay. I don't know if you were there. Yeah, yeah. It was right on the boardwalk. I think it was Huntington Beach, and maybe. We, and we had uh, those, the likeettes out there, yeah. these girls. And then I was a human toboggan. When, they, when all three girls got on me and rode me, yeah, down, rode, that, yeah. rode me down the hill. The yeah. sled. We did a lot of wild shit at that station. Yeah, we did. I remember it was like a little little drop-in fake snow yeah. thing. Yeah, That's where we were doing the broadcast. Yeah. And I walked back in. And that's where you I had, I had the, the mic. Doing that as they were riding me down the hill, I had the microphone live on the radio. That. <laughs> and the French kiss thing, that was because he was right there. I, I, didn't, I didn't think he was going to do it because I started leaning back towards the glass. And then I, I did that, and then he started doing it too. And oh my god, oh, it was like the perfect moment. That's crazy. Uh, DJ Brian asks, "What's a favorite caller story of all time, bro? I heard some crazy shit from your calls, dude. You do like, you bring up some <laughs> wild topics. I heard like the tonsil stone pop in recently. That was that was today. That's disgusting. Yeah, it was, it was about sick things that you do." And I, I meant more like baby talk. They were talking about Howard, like yeah. sickening things you do with Sick your partner. Sick things you do with your partner. But I meant like, yeah, baby talk. Or if you're not there, you turn on FaceTime. And yeah. that's when you, you sleep with them on FaceTime. That's weird. Like, that's sickening. Yeah. But this person uh, called up and said, that, yeah, we take, uh, we, we pick out each other's tonsil rocks. I, if, right. if you know what that is, it's so disgusting. Everybody's just now dry heaving. You know those things, those little like. No, know, I don't. There's those little pox you got in your in the tonsils. Back, yeah. And so sometimes you might get like something, some like food and bacteria collected in there, and you'd be like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then finally you get it up, and it's like this little white ball. You ever seen that, like little cottage cheese curd? Oh no, that's. And then you squeeze it, and you go like that, Ugh, and it stops. It, it smells like malort. It's so fucking bad. <laughs> and these people are picking at each other's tonsils. That's love. That is something. 
I don't know about a lot. Okay, well, that was what I heard. Is, Is that what everybody thought Tonsil Rocks was? <laughs> tonsil Stones. Tonsil Stones. I'm going to make that a new fucking str- uh, a new edible. Strain. A new edible Tonsil Stones gets you stoned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You got to make them white, too. Yeah, little white, white fucking white, gushers. White, creamy coconut Tonsil Stones. <laughs> white, white cream fill. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knows exactly what they are. That's why he's twitching. A little white gushers. Dude. You bite them and they burst in your mouth. <laughs> you would sell out. Pear flavored. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, all right. I'm sorry. Uh, favorite caller or a crazy or call that you remember? Uh, crazy. I know, dude, you've had how many calls have you taken? Hundreds of thousands, millions. Yeah, I think. Have I you mean, done the math? I think a crazy one, and I don't even know if your audience will know who this guy is. Al Pacino. Come on, guys. Yeah, we were talking about. Come on. <laughs> can you get the most famous person to call the show, and. Uh, and this guy calls up and he's like, hey, who is this? You know, it's like, it's that, you know, Frosty Addy and Frank show. And, uh, and then he wasn't like really getting anywhere. Cause I think, it, so we hung up on him and the person called back and was like, you just hung up on Al Pacino. Cause we, he, they were on the set doing something. And this person took the phone up there and says here and gave it to him live on the air. And he had no idea what the fuck was going on, but he was like, who the fuck is this? And we ended up hanging up on him. Yeah, Al Pacino called the show. <laughs> I hung up on him. Yeah. You're like, is this a fucking prank call? Or yeah, like, what is like, going on? No bullshit. So he called no, back? No, that was really him. No, they never called back. But the, pers- so, the person who called back who let gave you know. Phone. He was like listening while That's he was. That's what it was. On. It's like, if, you're, if you know anybody, get them to call. Yeah. I'll, give you, I'll give you concert tickets. And so this guy was working on a set with Al Pacino. That's wild. And wanted concert tickets. And so gave him the phone. And I hung up on him. <laughs> <laughs> you're so full of shit. Now listen to the show. Uh, yeah, he doesn't listen. He just had um, my turn. Working. I think it's your turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your turn. We're playing Connect Four right here. We got sidetracked. I was making some turn. questions. Mm. All right. Someone asked if you have a favorite Tom Likas memory or story. Tom. Yes. No, t- Tom's an interesting character because I mean, on the very last show uh, on the air. Yeah, I remember. I got wasted. <laughs> and I and I said uh, it was all Tom's fault that they changed formats. He didn't take a pay cut or something. Yeah, and I and because I knew he was coming up after me, and so there was no malicious intent on my part. And it wasn't, you know, it's not true. You but were drunk. I, I, well, I was drunk, and I thought this will be fucking funny. Like my, my last, on my last moment on KLSX, I'm gonna say it was Tom's fault, and I knew Tom was coming up next, so he could have said whatever he wanted to say. He could have been like that drunk fuck doesn't know what he's talking about, but he got really upset. I mean, he was like so upset that he spent the first two hours of his show defending himself. And I was like, this was supposed to be funny. It's supposed like, to be a like, bit. Like I roasted you on the way out, then you can roast me because I have no comeback. You always get the last word. And uh, yeah, he got upset. And then then he, could, then it, he couldn't escape it. So like he would be interviewed and it's like, so is it really true that you were the oh. one? And he's like, he calls me up and he goes, Frank, man, you got to, you know, tell people that <laughs> you were it's joking. not true. It's yeah. a joke. I'm like, yeah, no problem, Tom, whatever you need. So. Yeah, I put out a letter going, Tom had nothing to do with it. It was a fucking joke. <laughs> it was, was a bit. I was drunk. It was a bit. It was my last, my last hoorah. And so, but, uh, but no, Tom's a, a great guy with hit with that, that, that niche. Yeah. He, bro, his he events were it. wild. I used to do all them, uh, like his events. Oh yeah. That shit was, th- those were good times for me too. I got to learn. I learned a lot. <laughs> oh yeah, I imagine you did. Did you take full advantage? Oh what? Oh dude, single Adam was out of control. Oh my god. Yeah, especially you know having to walk around with the light cats all the time and the bod squad and the bod squad doing the sticker. You can't even do that stuff now. Doing all the sticker stops around the country or around the city. Yeah. Like random cities, just it was wild, bro. And you know me, I was already smoking back then. I was hooking you guys up with right. weed way back when, so it was it was a good time, bro. You realize you just lost, right? You didn't what? even pay attention. I didn't pay attention. Yeah, it's all good. It happens. Oh I'm, hell! T- t- secret. Uh, I'm a Hasbro recognized. I'm actually a Connect Four <laughs> World Champ. Uh, they uh, crowned me as the World Champ. I'm, really? I'm. Yeah, I've played thousands of games. I've traveled the world playing Connect Four. <laughs> and I used to do a giveaway. If you beat me in Connect Four, I give you like a free half ounce of weed or like a free really? bong or something. Yeah, this yeah. Is no bullshit. No true story. Oh my god. True story. You think you'd have a nicer set? <laughs> 
Uh-huh. Uh, I just want to. I don't want to. I don't want to give it away. You know. I, I don't mean, want people ca- to carved in mahogany like this fucking super. I have a giant silver set. Silver and gold. I have a giant set. <laughs> I have a, a custom set. But you know, we gotta go brand recognition. You know. Okay. okay. Gotta, this is what you get in the store. I was like, is this your original one you had as a kid and shit? <laughs> <laughs> that one's worn down, dude. All the all the. <laughs> No, I just recently picked that up, dude. I didn't realize how great I was in Connect Four until recently. And we killed it. Yeah, I got you. Listen, I know you got a lot of things to do. You got an early ass show. Yeah, I appreciate you coming through, bro. No problem, man. Listen, listen. Frank Kramer took his time to come out here and sit in with us all the way from Little Indiana Town, now Sorry. number one station in LA, bro. I learned a lot. I appreciate you. And if you listen, if Crack's looking for some content, absolutely, you know, we're out here. We got Kentron on the keys. He can he can play whatever song you want and sing now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, That'd be shout- great. Go, go check it out. Uh, it's uh, at or it's at my Crack House K R A K on Instagram, and then it's also uh, mycrack.com is the official website. My Crack House, K- my K-R-A-K house? Yeah. Okay, it's my on crack Instagram, house. and then mycrack.com is the uh, official website. Full 24-hour content streaming. 24-7. Is it video or audio? Right now it's just audio. Okay. Get, get, get the cameras in there. All right. Well, listen. Okay. Stay tuned to Crack, because you might see some more things crack off. You know what I'm saying? Look, he's a busy man. He's got to be on the radio in the morning. If you're out here early. in the L.A. area, 95.5, I think they stream it, too. You can check it out right. online. I uh, appreciate you, dude. It's been an honor. Uh, all these you, years later, see you just killing it, bro. It's inspiring. Thank you, and too, I, buddy. I, I'm trying. Congratulations I'm trying. on all your success. I'm trying. We're trying to make it happen. Keep dude. supporting them. Uh, shout, out, good ones. <laughs> shout out to everyone uh, uh, Shout out to all the Patreon subs too I appreciate y'all uh, We're going to do the April giveaway coming up And then don't forget everyone is entered in a monthly giveaway Automatically plus the exclusive content And all that great stuff you get Shout out to Dabwoods uh, for keeping us lit Apothecary for providing Hell everything yeah, dude. Uh, You know where you can find everything We appreciate y'all uh, Wherever you're listening We're going to get out of here uh, Until next time I'll see you guys okay Bye Bye <laughs> Bye Bye, Bye. all the best. Bye. 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 Bye.